We're live, we're live. <laughs> okay, guys, welcome to my regular Wednesday night live stream. Um, I need to give a shout out first to my guest before I even say any more because it's 2 a.m. there. Mm. Um, he, he, he went to sleep. Yeah, poor mother. Mm. <laughs> he went to sleep and then woke up again um, uh, just to be able to do this. So I really appreciate it. Mike Sargent, you are considered the godfather of the of the flat earth movement of today's day and age. I saw this on um, a mainstream video. I think it was CBS who went to a convention of, of yours and that kind of stuff. So um, <clears throat> that's where I found your name. But then a friend of mine said, oh, be careful. I don't know who that guy is and he might be a psyop. And when you said Me? you were friends with Oh, well, he didn't know who you were. Yeah. Oh, so when, okay. when when I when I wrote you an email asking you whether you knew who David Weiss was, I knew that your through your response you were not a psyop because you guys are acquainted, and so I found that really um, interesting. Yeah. Um, so that connected. Yeah. So um, before we begin, guys, as usual, I normally read a Bible verse. I didn't prepare one before but i'll just read whatever the app says for today i also was supposed to prepare one bible verse that i knew um uh confirmed or corroborated the globe view anyway so um according to the bible app for today's for today's um verse of the day mark chapter 16 verse 15 and he said unto them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature Okay, so that's good message. Preach the sacrifice that Christ made for us on the cross for our sins. I think that's a good message for everyone to know. Um, so today I have Mark Sargent. I appreciate you coming on. Before we begin, I think it's important for you to know that I bring on all types of guests. I always have on my channel. I've brought on racists. I've brought on... Uh, uh, like yesterday, I had a woman from the World Health Organization. That's going up next Wednesday because she couldn't do live on a Wednesday for me. Um, I've I've had all types of guests, but you have caused quite the disturbance for me. Thanks a lot. No, no kidding. <laughs> I, it's it's expected. Everybody again. Uh, I've had I I've lost count of the amount of interviews I could not do because they thought the topic was too controversial mm. so i, I don't know so why I'm, that just, is. I'm, I'm tickled wonderful great yeah and i itv really depends the produce some producers really love it so sometimes i get lucky and uh you know get to, to do national interviews and sometimes they say nope not gonna happen That's yeah fine. well um I've been delving into this little rabbit hole for quite some time now. Well, mm -hmm. I say quite some time. That's not true. It's been three days. But um, my whole entire drive leaving um, Victoria, coming into New South Wales, I was listening to uh, content from um, Flat Earth people. And I was getting sucked in. But then when I watched um, someone named Dr. I forgot his name. I don't think he's a real doctor, but some science guy that you guys have tried to debunk. Um, I think this is a particular YouTuber that... Uh, that you butt heads with um he kind of uh brought me back mm. but um so i just wanted to um begin with the reasons why i can agree with you sure so for those watching i don't know anything about science a lot of you know that i'm not particularly um, intelligent with that kind of stuff i'm not particularly smart with maths but what i am smart with is uh political stuff political awareness that's the the main gist of my channel mm -hmm. and i don't trust lots of organizations including nasa including the science community at large as a christian i i, I don't think i don't you can't observe a human uh you can't observe a fish becoming some sort of a, a weird monkey creature ape thing to then a human and so if if i'm if i'm supposed to be a good christian if i'm supposed to be the right type of Christian, I need to take the Bible as literally as possible. Now, the Bible, in my view, actually um, corroborates the spherical model. But um, you say that I, I've, according to all of the stuff that I've seen, many of you guys claim that there are 200 verses in the Bible that actually corroborate the Gleason's uh, model, which is the, the, the flat earth model, which for those who want to know, 
what the flat earth model is. It's not literally a flat earth. There is also a dome around it. So that's, that is, that is the earth. And then around the earth, there is a firmament. The Bible does talk about a firmament, meaning like the, like in the Simpsons movie, there's the dome. However, if you look at a ball, uh, the ball can have a firmament too. Like it's not that impossible for, for, for God to have created the earth and then for there, there to, yeah, exactly. And for there to be a force field or a firmament around the whole entire globe. Yeah. And so um, those are my two arguments. Uh, where do you want to go from? Do you want to start from the not trusting organizations or do you want to start from the model and the firmament? Well, let's do this. Uh, would you say that your audience is mostly biblical, Christian in nature? Oh, you sent me a private message. Um, y yes, I would say that. Perfect. All right, let's start there. Uh, the op your opening Bible verse. I would counter that with. Uh, the opening Bible verse was just a Bible verse. It wasn't anything uh, to do. Oh with no, no, no! I know, I know, oh, okay. I know. Right. <laughs> Was, like, but, well, doing? You didn't. You didn't have the chance to to really see if there was something in the Bible that would, you know, one of my favorite ones. Let's put it this way: uh, Do you have you ever heard of Werner von Braun, the founder of NASA, German oh. scientist that they extracted from Nazi Germany? Uh, no. Okay, no. perfect. It's fine. Uh, I'm perfect. We're, she doesn't we're, know anything. Let that, me feel no, like I'm I'll, I'll, hit, I'll hit you with a lot of stuff and stop me as, as we go along. Uh, Werner von Braun, who was the um, uh, the lead V2 rocket scientist in Nazi Germany, a lot of people don't know, in, in wars, if you are intelligent enough, if you are too, if you are so much of a nerd, you will not get prosecuted for war crimes. You will be recruited. It's like, no, you've got a dollar value. And he was grabbed by the United States, and he was the guy that actually founded NASA. Uh, okay. Werner von Braun. If you have von in front of your name in Germany, it's it's from the aristocracy, and and the Russians took the half the scientists. We took half, the other half of the scientists. We both developed supposedly space programs. By the anyway, way, some of my audience are also H deniers. Hedge what? H the letter H deniers. What's H? Uh, um, uh, the small hats. Deniers. Oh, oh, well, you, well we can't okay. say that. We can't say that word. I don't think so. Not for YouTube. I don't know. I just no. Don't you, wanna... can, no you can say the word Holocaust. That's fine. okay. The Holocaust. No, 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 no. Nice. Don't, yeah, don't yeah. worry about that. I, well, okay, let's jump. Some of my that audience that. is that. I don't know how I. Do Any, it. Anyone that is a Holocaust. Very, anyone that is a Holocaust denier, I'll, I'll give that. I'll, I'll give you an argument. Which no, is, but we're not talking about that. Well, no, no, no. Real, real quick. Real quick. Okay, okay, okay. In the United States, there was a comedy series a world war ii comedy series called hogan's heroes oh yes back i've heard in, of them i've back seen in it the day. yeah and you say okay what's the point my point is who was in hogan's heroes you had an american you had a french guy you had a black guy you had an english guy there were no jewish people in hogan's heroes why not well because they had their own camps you can argue it all you want, but that is the absolute truth everybody else was in a mixed camp the jewish people had their own camps why? Because they had a compliancy issue, meaning they really didn't fight back much. Why there was a thousand a thousand prisoners for every four guards. So you, again, you can deny it all you want, but you cannot deny that they had their own camps. I don't care what the numbers say. You know, if it's like, oh, it was it was two million, it was six million, it was whatever. They had their own, you know, their own own accommodations. You have to ask yourself why about that. Anyway. <laughs> okay, this uh, Operation Paperclip. That Operation Paperclip was, was the, when, so yeah. Put you know, that up on the screen. The United States, when they went into uh, Germany, when they divided up all the scientists. So real quick, we don't want to delve too much on Werner von Braun, but we yeah. can go all sorts of different directions. So Werner von Braun, when he finally died in the 1977, I believe, uh, you can look up his headstone if you want, Werner von Braun's headstone. It, you would have thought it would have been this magnanimous thing, you know, this giant granite thing with a man pointing at the stars. No, it was just the year he was born, the year he died, and a Bible verse. And it said Psalms 19.1. I had to look okay. it up. I didn't know what Psalms 19.1 was. Neither. Yeah. It, it's uh, the, the King James Version of, I believe, is, uh, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Why would the father of NASA, who was not a big religious guy, put that particular Bible verse? That is on, unusual. Mm -hmm. on, his, on his headstone. It's, was he giving us hints from the grave? I absolutely believe. 
believe that he was. Uh, I sent you a link real quick for anyone's out there because this this will really send you on your way. The, okay. Because even though I, I, I can do chapter and verse, the guy who's really chapter and verse is a guy named Rob Skiba, a guy I converted back in 2015. Oh, I know who that is. I, I follow him, but because of um, I Believe in Giants. Oh, well, perfect. Rob, well, Rob Skiba is... One, is the expert on Giants, yeah. I've well, had he's, LA, also, LA, he's also yeah. one of the most popular flattered speakers out there. And he's a Christian. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm and he's aware a, and he's a of Christian. And of he him, got yeah. so flipped out about the whole flat earth thing. We uh, we did two big interviews back in 2015 when I didn't even have a podcast. And he ended up making a website called testingtheglobe.com and where he goes in fine tooth comb through chapter and verse, everything in the Bible. And mm -hmm. he comes back at me months later and he says, dude, the, the, the Bible is a flat earth book. There is only one verse in the entire book. You can check this yourself, but the website's great. That even hints at some sort of globe, and it's Isaiah 40, 22. He who sitteth, sitteth upon the circle of the earth. He goes, that's a problem, because in the ancient Hebrew, a uh, circle is not globe, it's not ball, it's not sphere. Circle is circle. Your dinner plate is a circle. This is a circle. You know, it just means some sort of round surface. It does not have to be a globe. So a circle can just be like like that. Yeah, it that's doesn't, a circle. Yeah, but it's not a ball, according to it's not a ball. And, and a lot of you. Yeah. And I, oh, there's so many different verses we can go to, but I'll rattle off uh, just a few ideas real fast. Um, how many times have you heard that the earth is fixed and immovable? A lot. Uh, that it's God's footstool. Uh, the story of Joshua. The God just rests his feet on there, does he? <laughs> there, there you go. Why not? Why wouldn't he? Um, the, the Joshua asked God to hold the sun and the moon in the sky for an extra day so he can slay more enemies, right? Well, that's super easy. When it's some sort of flat model, you just hold the sun and the moon in the sky. If it's a solar system, that's a way tougher to do physics wise. Um, the second coming where everyone can see him at the same time. How does that work in a globe? It's true. Yeah. But with the second coming, sorry to interrupt. There's also, uh, the plagues, like, there will be plagued again not us will probably be dead and gone by then but yeah. humanity will be plagued again and um a lot of that was thought to be meteors coming on earth and the sun falling and 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 people the oh. earth being destroyed so that doesn't match with that but sorry keep going it does it in a flat world if the sky okay and by let's clarify some things what i believe in is yes we are living on a flat stationary disc it's not in space there is no space this can thing could be sitting there in God's is world. space because that dude flew up what's his name yuri the first man in space yuri gadget but yuri g his okay. surname begins with g he's and that anyway Our he's part been of the to space. space program huh the part of the soviet space program the us yes the, the first yes they were the first people in space he was right. in space says who the soviets those guys uh, and, well, then, uh, and then and then the, the americans landed on the moon right obviously well right? i don't know about the moon landing i'm not going to say anything either. i feel like that could have been completely acted but i do believe but the russians that that, that, that yuri guy went to space the thing is when i said that to a different friend of mine who's a flat earther he said yeah and that guy said it was a flat plane but i don't know where that quote is and no one's been able to supply me with it so can i I can't attach. You're saying, you're saying something different. You're saying says who says what the USSR space program was. My friend um, is saying no, 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 no. He did go to he did go above the whatever the orbit is called, like the close orbit, not the far orbit or whatever. Lower Earth orbit, yeah. The lower Earth orbit, and yeah. he said it was a flat plane. But I haven't been supplied with any type of uh, quote proving that. So anyway, keep going. I didn't mean Everything, to interrupt you. Go by the way, I can't in the, in this. I can't attach images, can I? Uh, no, you can't. I'm sorry. That's right. No, I'll, I'll email to you really fast. So, and you want me to share it? Is that what you want me to do? If you want, it would probably be helpful though. Here, let me do this. Let me attach. Let me send. Check. Okay, your Adrian. Adrian, you said that he said it was flat. Uh, thank you for watching. You never gave me the quote, dude. Anyway, That's right. I'm That's not right. yelling at you, Adrian. <laughs> I'm just anyway. saying. So we are basically here. Let me give let me give, give you the crib notes. So we are this living guy. in a building. Yuri Gagarin. That's right. Thank you, Daniel. That's it. 
Wouldn't matter what his name is. Actually, I don't have the Soviet space program guys mentioned because it doesn't matter. They're, okay, no they're, they're useless. You are living in a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling, a, a, a construct, a building that is so huge that even our best and brightest uh, never figured it out till almost 1960. And when they did, they decided to keep it a secret. Uh, but the ceiling, everything why? you see on the ceiling, why would they keep it? Okay, if you want to jump to why, that's perfectly fine. Sorry, no, no, finish what you were saying. Finish your thoughts. Sorry, yeah, the, the, I, the, I'm, the, we're probably it, not going to go for an hour today. We're probably going to end up going for three and a half hours. That's <laughs> fine. Uh, the, the, everything I just have so many questions. Everything you see on the ceiling, uh, the stars, the planets, uh, mm -hmm. the, the moon, the sun, they're all part of a giant projection system. So everything, everything, all of this. All of this. All of this. Is is moving, it's, but it is yes. no all you everything you see up in the sky is just a giant ornamental clock that predates language. That's all it is. You do not even have to have language with it, though the sky, you know, again, this is a biblical thing, by the way. You know, the the, the sun, a, a, a massive light to light up the day, the, the moon, a wonderful night light, and then everything else to show signs and seasons, and of course, and your occasional wonders. You know, but you can you can track everything from your crops to everything else that you can track with the with the sky. It's it's a wonderful system, but it is completely artificial, built by God. Of course, anyway, it's built by God. Well, yes. Um, and so anyway, testingtheglobe.com highly recommend it. Rob Skiba really great on this. Um, so what, what was the second part? Where. The, uh, oh, why? I think I said why. Oh, yeah, let's go into why real fast, which is like, why Why would they fake it? I know what you're going to say. It's that because, at least spiritually, if we are all alone in the universe, that can sell the narrative of other things and, and the fact that we are actually the center of the universe according to a flat earther. Right. We being the center makes us more important, just like we didn't come from monkeys. We actually were made in the image of God. That makes us more important. Not just more important, but it discredits the groups that are trying to be the ultimate power. Meaning you can't be the ultimate authority if you're not the ultimate authority. If all of us, okay, let, let's get into it really fast, which is people say, oh, oh, by the way, I've got to clarify that we had nothing to do with the building of this, obviously. But there's a whole bunch of people, not you, that think that, oh, you know, we, we engineered this in some way. It's like, no, 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 human beings had nothing to do with this. All we did was kind of figure out all the way until 1960, we had no idea. When we figured out in 1960, it's like, oh, wait a minute. The earth is kind of built like this. It subverts a lot of things, three ways. First off would be academically. And that is every university, think of every university in the world right now, uh, astrophysics and astronomy would be decimated, never recover from it. And can remaining... everyone see? Is this the image? Can you see an image? I can see you, well, a bunch of replicated things, like when you first tried to share it, but oh, I can't see the image. You know, it's like a picture within a picture within a picture within a picture. Yeah, crap, that's not what I want. That's right. I'm um, sorry, keep take, going. Take, keep talking. Take time. Keep, keep so, talking and I'll... Yeah, so in the remaining physical sciences, biology, archaeology, hydrology, geology, whatever it is, would be have to be retooled from the ground up. Mm -hmm. That's just academically. You're basically turning every university upside down. And that's a lot of them. There's thousands and thousands of universities out there. Sure. Um, economically, cool. The, the markets are so twitchy, you would have to suspend world markets entirely for months because you would have to figure out what it means. And then the last one, the most important one, which would be the religious side of things, which is the main five religious houses of this world of um, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, and Christianity. Oh, yeah, that is me. Yeah, I hate that, <laughs> I hate that shot. Ugh. I'm also wearing a hat. By the way, when I wear a hat, I'm 10 years younger. Yeah, evidently. Yeah. So Apollo 12. Can yes, everyone see Apollo that? 12. So anyway, so so you give all those major religious houses leverage, yeah, Paul, the Apollo 12 shot, if you can maximize it or not, whatever. Um, you're giving them leverage against science. And science will not tolerate that. They will not sit for that. And so they uh, they decided just to keep a secret. I mean, it's not what the, the powers that be would stand to gain. Remember, they didn't even know for sure. They didn't even know until almost 1960. It's what they stand to lose, which is if the world figured this out, we were definitely not ready for it in 1960, not even close. Mm. Um, but if there was a chance that the civilization would grab pitchforks and torches and, and just revolt, 
would you tell the people? That's the shortest Illuminati meeting ever. You know, they'd be like, what's the worst that could happen? And you start rattling off that stuff that I just did. And it's like, yeah, we're not going to tell anybody you, until we figure out exactly how we can use it to our advantage. And uh, that's that's the big reason why. It's power, power and control, but the chance that they could lose what they already built. Civilization was already established in 1960. Could you have released it earlier? Yeah, maybe, but not now. Not until you had not until you had the infrastructure to set it up. And we do high speed internet, social uh, media, six billion smartphones. You can you can pass off any narrative you want now. Like I don't know, telling the whole world that there's this weird disease out there that's killing everybody, and we should all lock down forever. I, there, I think you you and my audience will predominantly agree. The thing oh. is, people have telescopes. People can see Saturn. People can see these things and they say, oh, I can see the sphere. Yep, yep, so I can see the moon. doesn't of, match yeah, yeah. that. Yeah, I can see the moons of Jupiter. I've heard this many, many a time. It's like, I can see the moons of Jupiter. I go, great, go to a planetarium. I know that dates me. Um, go to a planetarium <laughs> with a pair of binoculars and look at Jupiter. Oh, okay, there's Jupiter. Can you see the moons of Jupiter? Yep. Can you land on it? Nope. Why not? Well, because you're looking at an image on a ceiling. And it's like, what's your point? My point is, when you walk out of that building, who's to say you're just not in a much, much bigger building with better technology? I mean, think about it. You bring a caveman into a planetarium, you could freak them out because they, everything on the ceiling, because they don't understand what they're looking at, the tech, that they, they, they will absolutely believe it as real. We see it many, many times in science fiction novels and, and uh, television. Why, why would this be any different? You're living in a simulation, a movie. And the, the tech out there, we're, heck, we're discovering stuff with computers. We've been doing it for the last 20 years that proves that. Things scream right now that we're... And by the way, it's not... If it's flat and enclosed, then God is a programmer. And that's not being blasphemous in any way, shape, or form. I'm saying we describe the world and the tools that are presented to us. And I think God's the greatest programmer of all time. Absolutely. But there's just so many uh, questions because it's like when you think of... When 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 the planet is turning, hang on, let me see. What, I tried to get the photo up. I can't. Um, as long as you can see it, you can add it later or give it to your people. Sure. As well, but I want you to look at it. But when you say things, when you and your crowd say uh, water doesn't curve, and then you put a droplet of water onto a leaf, that's a little mini dome. Mm, when what, you that's... are surfing and the water curves to suit your surf. That is curved water. No, no, so no, 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 no. The water, doesn't make sense. Can, okay, two completely different things, and I'm not picking on you because I know you're. No, 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 no. I'm just going um, off when what it comes little to a science... single droplet. Single droplet of water. That's elemental. That's just water tension, and that is yes. You're absolutely right. When you take take a take a drop of water, it'll sit there. What well, has to? It, it's not going to lay completely flat at a certain size. But you add enough water, you know, at ten drops, twenty drops, you can see it. That curve just. just squishes down squishes down and then it becomes absolutely tabletop flat you put uh, 100 drops of water on a table you're not going to see the curve oh yeah you'll see a little bit of an edge at the very end where it connects to the table but that's about it and as far as water curving when you're surfing no no no, no. water can bend and do a whole lot of other things but so can any liquid at that point uh, water moves and it's flexible but it lays completely flat which is why we use it for long distance photography all the time and it's and it's great, which leads into another thing, which is forget about the water, you know, itself, the, the little droplet. When you look across any sort of um, body of water, I don't care if it's 10 miles, 50 miles or whatever, mm. you can see objects on the other side, which you should not be able to see. What's changed? Why are we talking about this now in 2021 instead of, you know, 1940, 1950? Why are we talking about this now? The reason is because of HD technology. When I made the clues and we didn't, it was not talked about in the documentary, the, the director and the producers of that documentary hated this topic by the end. It's why we never made a sequel. They burned bridges. Oh my God. By Wait, the end, what, what was the documentary that you made again? Did uh, I watch it? I feel like made, the documentary was made. The, the, the true we, shot it, we shot it in 2017. Did the film festivals in 2018, and Netflix picked it up uh, the beginning of 2019. Oh, I haven't seen anything on right? Netflix. Right? Okay. 2017, 2018. Yeah, beginning of 2019. Beginning of 2019. And uh, but uh, but yeah, yeah, it's on Netflix called Behind the Curve, and they hated it. They would not. And we shot for seven. Oh, months. I have heard of it. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we shot for seven months, and by the time they got to the end of it, they hated us. Oh my God, they hated us so much because, <laughs> because they they were none of them were were part of us. 
they all were, they were complete science people. I mean, very whatever was on the media. Like I could get into the we spent a lot of time on this. It's like, look, whatever's on the news is absolutely true. There is no bias. Everything is completely objective journalism. It's like you can't be that naive. You know, come on. It's, it's like, look, trust everyone, but count your change. Look what you know, the, the corp media is owned by corporations, which are owned by bigger corporations. Nothing is objective. They it's never has been. They just only realized over the last 50 years, it's like, wait, we can tell people anything and they're just yeah. going to buy it because, but, but I don't blame them at the same, but if you're wondering, you know, why the whole virus thing, why people's like, why is everybody going along with this? Because why would they not? I go, the, the news tells you when there's a traffic jam, when the weather's this, who won the Oscars for the most part, they're true. If they want to slip in some other stuff and then really hammer it, is a, what, what alternative? Most people don't know that there's even such thing as an alternative opinion. Anyway, um, sorry. Back to let me let me show the image. The, the image. I know, I know sorry, we're jumping around a lot. I just don't know where. To, I don't know how to do this seamlessly. Okay, me, my, me, my head is full of crap. Yeah. So Neil deGrasse Tyson, and this is uh -huh. part of my. I've seen some of his. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The world's most famous scientist, and there's only three uh -huh. scientists in the entire world. Um, one from America, Neil deGrasse Tyson, one from The Crown, which is uh, Brian Cox, and then Michio Kaku from Japan. That's it. There's only three media scientists in the entire world, meaning there's only three guys they ever put on television. Neil said once, uh, the good thing about science is that it's true whether or not you believe in it. Probably the most arrogant thing I've ever heard ever, meaning that science is absolutely right. What we say, what we put our stamp on is absolutely true. And then they revise it until it's, in my quote, I, my counter to Neil is that science is only true until the day it's not. Hmm. Meaning, you know, we, science has been wrong so many times about so many things. And then once, once they know they're wrong, they just put it under the umbrella that is science. They say, okay, well, this is the new truth. It's like, yeah, but you were criticizing everybody up until that point. You know, why, why would you do that? And so yeah. we, we, sorry. We're jumping around a bit. Let me throw something at you really quick. You want me? Let me knock out. By the way, if you are not a fan of the moon landing, if you because you were that, you know, well, the moon landing might be fake, but that doesn't mean everything else is fake. And I've heard this before. It's like why? Why would it? Why would anything else be real at all? If the Americans, by the way, another thing is why everybody outside of America still believes the Americans went to the moon. I know, I understand it inside America. It's rah, rah, wave the flag, go team, we're the greatest, right? <laughs> right. But outside, you guys absolutely buy it. And and the, everybody that I've talked to over the last six years of doing this, they've said, well, yeah, it's because it was on television. It's like, that that's all it took? We just had to put it on TV and you guys believed it? Well, yeah, and magazines and stuff. It's like, okay. So the shot I sent you, by the way, is a magazine shot. You know, it's, this is an official NASA thing from uh, Apollo 12. Apollo 11 was the first one in uh, 1969 and Apollo 12 was shortly after that. And if you look, if you pull it up on your screen, uh, and which uh, I've tried to do, hang on again, you don't have to put it on their screen, just your screen. Oh yeah. 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 Fine. Okay, yeah. Oh, you can see it. I don't care if your audience is, it. you can always share it with them. Right. Yeah. I can, I can see it. There's, there's a, there's a man with a, sh there's a shadow, right. And you're talking yeah, man, man taking a picture and yeah. he's on the moon and there's a dish and then there's the capsule. And then remember, there's only two astronauts in the moon at any given one at given time because there's a third one that kind of orbits the moon. Supposedly, it's a whole other thing, right? So this shot, by the way, is, is a it's a beautiful shot. Wonderful shot. Yeah, it's it's crystal yeah. clear, high def. You can zoom into it. It's really, really great. The longer you stare at it, the worse it gets. Why? Well, because if you know anything about science, it defies laws of physics all over the place but it's a good iconic shot, right? Uh, number one, everybody knows this. You're in a sunny place, right? If it's, if the sun, if there's only one light source and it's 93 million miles away, you go outside right now and test this. Uh, all the, the shadows run parallel, right? So to each other, you can walk out the, the tree, the mailbox, the car, they're all going to be running the same direction because there's only one light source. Well, that's, that's, that's kind of a big problem here because all the light sources are going to, or all the shadows are going to intersect. There are at least four different shadow angles here. That's impossible unless the light source is really, really close. Like, I don't know, a stage light 30 yards behind the guy. Wouldn't uh, they have lights, though? Wouldn't they have brought lights with them on the moon? No, no, no. 
no, 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 nobody's. Why would you bring stage lights to the moon? No, not stage lights, but wouldn't they have brought torches or something nope. strong enough so that they can? I don't know. I'm no, just they were spitballing. Be, I have no idea. No, because they were going to be on the lit side of the moon the entire time. There's only one light source here. They're not bringing stage lights. There's two guys. I didn't say that. I said lights, like maybe a any lights. No, there was never a flashlight. Maybe on, on the, the helmet, no. like when you go camping, you have the little tiny torch on your head. Yeah, you know what? That's a that's a great idea. And in sci-fi movies, you're absolutely right. I'm not trying to be mean. <laughs> I don't know. No, no. In sci-fi movies, do you're right? They do bring. They do have little tiny lights on their helmets. Uh, because you don't know when you you might be going into a dark place. You're absolutely right. Six years, no one's ever brought up that scenario. Thank you for doing that. However, the light that's here is massive. It's huge, and it's behind them. But the shadows are all going uh, in the wrong directions. It can't be. Uh, okay. Second, all sorts of footprints in the ash. Perfect, oh, perfect little footprints. Footprints everywhere, right? In the ash, yeah, they never, they never yeah. talk about. No one ever took a shovel and dug below the. Apparently, the, the ash is perfectly three inches deep around everywhere. It's like, what's below that? Is there rock? Are you going to show it? Are you going to blow some of this dust away? Okay, there's footprints everywhere, but underneath that big rocket nozzle, underneath that capsule, there there isn't anything out of place. There's no blast pattern. There's no splay pattern. The the, the ash should be completely gone. In fact, you should see this big burn crater underneath this this thing. There's ten thousand pounds of thrust underneath that engine. Nothing's out of place. It's like it was just set there. No one wants to talk about it. That's fine. We won't even go into the stars, why there's absolutely not a single star in any shot on the moon, because people say, well, it's exposure settings. I go, fine. You, I'll give you that one. The exposure settings. I know exactly why, though, they didn't put stars. It's because the stars are a clock system, and they have to be in the right place at the right time. This thing's time and date stamped on the bottom of the image, mm. meaning Orion on any given point has to be in the sky at a very specific point during the day. That's the whole point of the, the God star system. Well, if the belt of Orion is in the wrong spot, you, the nerds are going to pick it up on really quick. And you couldn't do that sort of 3D modeling in 1969. So somebody said, yeah, we're not, just don't do stars. Nobody talk about stars. We're not doing stars. Fine. That's my my thing. Uh, the satellite dish in the middle of it, uh, that's a VHF transmitter. That thing uh, runs off a car battery. Hey, that's got no wattage whatsoever. To, it may may do Morse code at 50 miles, if you're lucky. And that thing supposedly was pumping out 10 frames of color video a second and perfect two-way communication with an Earth that was 250,000 miles away. And this was done in 1969? With, with what wattage? How, how? Even if you're bouncing it off to supposedly a geostationary uh, capsule above, how, what wattage are you pumping back through the atmosphere? How, how, how are you lining this up with analog technology? It's a beautiful shot, but that's all you have to do. It's like, well, that how, cause how are you communicating? Well, it's the dish, not 1969. No, I mean, I could drive 30 minutes from here. I'm going to lose cell signal. And in 1969, this thing was, was perfect. And then of course, last but not least, uh, the space suit, the space suit defies, you know, they're running around there with that little backpack on them. Somebody tell me how that spacesuit d d um, combats the vacuum of space. And I'll give you a, a quick example. But the vacuum of space, I already saw this in, in a video. It's not literally a vacuum that it sucks. Absolutely literal. Well, no, no. It's it's no pressure, though. Meaning... I'm just, it, I'm just it, telling it, you. I'm just, I'm just parroting what I heard. That's okay. The definition of a vacuum is the ultimate pressure difference. Meaning we are breathing in what we are talking through right now is not nothing it's just invisible to our eyes it is 80 percent nitrogen and 20 percent oxygen which is why scuba tank guys have usually have two tanks one for nitrogen or oxygen or they have one that's mixed right but it's it's mm -hmm. full of stuff it's chunky you're basically living in a cloud uh, a, a, an invisible cloud or a soup the thin version of water you're not walking around you're swimming in this thing the only the difference is it's thinner than water right a vacuum and the reason why most people don't get this is because the vacuum looks almost identical to what we're breathing in right now, but there's nothing there. There's no nitrogen, there's no oxygen, there's no trace gases, there's nothing. Uh, there's an old uh, science saying, which is nature hates a vacuum. And you're absolutely right. It's the difference when uh, you blow up a balloon with your, with your mouth and you let it go. You know, balloon flies off. Why? Because the pressure difference. There's more pressure in the balloon than outside of the balloon. Well, imagine there's nothing there's no pressure outside that balloon in fact you can you can look this up on on any media platform anything in a vacuum chamber if it's soft a balloon will explode 
uh, a can of anything will explode. Everything will explode in a, in a freaking vacuum chamber because the pressure difference is so great. Except a space suit. And that's kind of a problem because a spacesuit is a soft suit. It's basically, uh, it's it's no different than a football. And I'll use your football, right? You know, if you put a football in a vacuum chamber, not a rugby ball, but a, a football, right? Rugby Aussie ball, one. Do the same thing. It'll explode mm -hmm. because the, the soft, it'll just get more and more tight and then it'll, it'll just burst. Why doesn't a spacesuit become a football? No one, no scientist will answer that. I go, what is in that backpack that, that can combat the vacuum the, the pressure difference if you don't want like using the word vacuum fine the pressure difference between the inside of that suit and the outside of that suit it should just go completely rigid the guy should tip over it should burst and he should die which is one of my challenges that i put out there for three years you want me to, you want to prove to me and it's like oh is there anything can convince you that uh that the, the this actually a globe i go well, yeah i got something down here that you could really help i go loan me a freaking spacesuit from any era non-tethered you know because that's a completely self-contained backpack put me in a vacuum chamber pull the switch tell me what happens tell me how i live find me footage of of, a, of an astronaut sitting around in a vacuum chamber there should be thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of guys in a vacuum chamber you know what the number one search is on youtube when you type in guy in a vacuum chamber is james may from top gear oh in a, okay in a g-force suit in an american air base it's not even a, an astronaut suit it's a pilot suit g-force suits are completely different they're tethered they're part of the plane um you know where astronauts train they don't train in vacuum chambers we don't see that we they train in swimming pools why would they train in a swimming pool it's the exact opposite of what you would do that the swimming pool the pressure is going in why would you be in water at all would be well because uh, we have to simulate the floaty feeling you get on the moon I go, why would there be a floaty feeling on the moon well, because the gravity is so much less. I go, okay, so 180-pound man weighs 30 pounds. It's still 30 pounds. He's not going to float. It's still going to drop. 30 pounds still drops. No different. You wouldn't be moving in slow motion. Everything would be super fast. Anything, you'd have super strength. No one has anything. You could run extremely fast. Everybody would be moving in hyper motion because you would weigh nothing in compared to your muscles, but you wouldn't float. It was a brilliant cinematic technique, which was but all you had to do. It. I've what? seen, uh, you can buy, you can buy the experience where you go in a room and you float. You mean the zero G plane? Where I don't know, it's a room. room. It's, it's a room. No, no, there's no, what, air blowing underneath I you? saw it, I don't know, I saw it on the Big Bang Theory and I think it's on plenty of other, I think it's, uh, it's no, 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 okay. It's a so room. And, and you're floating. My, maybe yeah, that's, that's different. That is simulated skydiving, which is you can, there are rooms all over the place. That's something new they came up with, which is you can blow air from a giant fan underneath and you can pretend that you're skydiving, which is skydiving, you know, you're just falling, but the air, no, no, you, no. Can, you, can, you can keep a person hovering. The only place to even simulate what they call gravity, we'll get into that in a second, is something I know, called- I you think it's a myth, yeah. No, 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 I don't think it's a myth. No, in fact, oh, most- Oh, well, you're, okay, well, the thing, don't, don't say it's a, gravity's a myth. David Weiss- No, 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 that is, that, the, that's the myth. I listened to him on my drive up. He used that term. It Who, is David a Weiss? myth. Yes, I promise. All right, all right. So, uh, I mean, I, I could be wrong, but no, no, no. Okay, that no, no, I, heard David, that. I David, did keep my earth that's, saying that. That's the opening line. The myth is that gravity is the only force that's keeping us down. Uh, which he's right in that in that sense. Now he and I differ a little bit on exactly what gravity is, but then again, Neil deGrasse Tyson, any scientist, in fact, you can ask any scientist and they will tell you it's like we don't know what gravity is. We can only tell you what it does. We can only tell you the symptoms of gravity. I can tell you this watch falls, right? Yes. And that's a symptom of gravity. Can't tell you exactly why. It's just for science, it's a magical mo molecular force that magnetically pulls things down to the center of a sphere. For me, it's just a magical molecular force that pulls things straight down. That's, that's the only difference. However, buoyancy is a real thing, which is- Buoyancy the is the ability of something to float and then density is um because you guys say that and you guys say that it's a uh what do you guys say it's a force but well, it's not density, it's not actually a force density is how much matter sits in a particular space and buoyancy yeah. is an object's tendency to float that's not a source that is another way of saying gravity because those are the two things that explain gravity yeah but buoyancy only here's the catch though buoyancy only works in a pressurized system 
Meaning, was, let's get to the vacuum really fast. Okay, so if you want to say pressure difference, that's fine. So let's say- No, I don't care. You can say vacuum. I'm not personally offended. Let's say the, uh, the, the room above you, if there's a second floor, you turn that into a vacuum chamber, right? Okay. In fact, I could send you videos on this, but we'll, we'll, let's go with the thought experiment. Okay, vacuum chamber above you, valve. You pull the valve, what happens? It is not like the movies. It is instant, it is violent. The movies just take creative license. It, mm. But the pressure equalizes instantly. I don't care if the valve is even only a foot wide. It is going mm -hmm. to equalize. It's not like, oh my God, we only have two minutes of air left. You know, get the duct tape. It's, it's very, very, very fast. We've had horrible pressure equalization accidents using um, submersibles where people die. It's, it's a bad, bad way to die. Anyway, the point is, is that all the air in your room will go upstairs instantly, violently. Why? Because gravity cannot beat the power of, and I'm going to just going to use vacuum, but it's the, the pressure differential. It cannot beat it. Question is, when you go outside, why is your atmosphere still here? And your knee-jerk reaction will be gravity because that is the only thing they tell you. It's, it's, and they say, well, it has to be gravity because we're still alive. It's like, it's like, really? The same gravity that couldn't hold the air in your room 10 seconds ago, same gravity, can't keep, is supposedly keeping all the atmosphere on right now. And, and, and then your wheels will start to spin. And then be like, okay, I'll get one more for you. When our atmosphere ends and space begins, what happens there? And exactly where is that place? Science won't answer it. It's like, well, it's between 600 and 700 miles. It's like, really? Have you done any experiments of that? What exactly happens? When our atmosphere ends and space begins, where there's pressure and non-pressure, what happens? Because it absolutely goes against the law of thermodynamics that science created, which is pressure cannot exist next to non-pressure without a barrier. It cannot happen. And yet they, they, won't, they won't talk about it. And, it's, and the, the only alternative is that it's pressurized, meaning the only reason is because the, the, the atmosphere is still on here because it's enclosed. It's inside a building. It's called air pressure for a reason. And by the way, greenhouse gases, doesn't that make a little more sense if it's an actual greenhouse? It always bugged me, even when I was younger, way before flat earth. It's like, oh, the fluorocarbon, the ozone and everything, it, get, it rises up to the top. I go, what happens then? Well, then it just goes to space. I go, why doesn't everything else go to space? I've even had people say that it's so few particles when it meets space that it's hardly a pull at all. I go, yeah, but space wouldn't discriminate if that was the case. Space doesn't care about if it's just a little bit of particles. It's going after everything that's not nailed down. Anyway, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I spoke to a friend of mine. He's a huge YouTuber. We always text each other and debate each other about silly things. Right. And then I said, oh, hey, uh, look at this, look at this. And he was, he actually had to be texting me weeks earlier because I'm his sort of go-to Christian person. Right. And he said, what's the firmament? And I said, the firmament, I said, I think that's like a, a blockage because at the time I wasn't positive. And I said, I think it's a blockage. I think it's like, I said, when, when, uh, am I echoing? No, not at all. Okay, guys, um, I feel like I'm echoing in the audience. Tell me if I am, but um, if I'm not good, um, it's not, not to echoing me. to him. I, I should hear yeah, so, so that's good. Um, so anyway, when I was explaining to him what the firmament was, I was also trying to explain about Noah's Ark and the flood and like and that, that and that everything changed because um, there were, there didn't used to be storms prior to to the um, antediluvian era. There were no storms. There was no flooding. There was no rain. Um, and then um, he said, "What does common sense tell you?" He goes, because he was like, why are, you, why are you interviewing that guy? Like, why? And I'm like, because I want to. Um, okay, good. Thanks, Australian Protectionist Party. Um, and I said, because I want to. He goes, okay, but before we continue, what do you think? Do you think? Use your common sense. Do you actually think the earth is flat? And I said, well, no. I said, but that's not because of common sense. I said, common sense, this is a ball. If I stand here on the ball, I'll fall. If I try to stand on top of the ball, then I'll be okay. I said, so for him to try and say to me, use your common sense, technically common sense would dictate that me being on this plate makes more sense than on the ball. I, I didn't, I, I, so I was, I, I said that to him. I said, common sense tells me that we are on a flat earth, but I believe we're on a spherical plane because all of the algorithms, all of the seasons, all of the turning, all of the stuff about the sun and the moon and with the flat earth, 
um, how do, how does one explain seeing the moon and the sun at the same time right. and the seasons and the ocean and mm -hmm. the waves and blah, 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 blah. Like I said, because of that, I believe in a spherical earth, but not because yeah. of common sense, because common sense does not dictate that. I don't know if he's watching today, but yeah. And, and you're, uh, and you're right in that regards. Uh, I, my response is George. Yes, Orwell. please respond. Yeah. I, by the way, I sent you a couple more, uh, pictures Emails? that I, that I want okay. you to get an email. So okay. George Orwell. Uh, yes, who I know wrote, who that is. Yeah. Of course, of course you do. Uh, I know. I'm smarter than I look. But for your audience, uh, he wrote 1984, a, yeah. a book which gets more relevant with every year. Okay. Uh, yes. Really especially this year and last mm. year. Uh, he Should said, it was an interesting, he was not a flat earther, but he wrote something in uh, 1946, I believe where he, he said that, you know, it was interesting. He was talking about how people just believe whatever science says. And he said that uh, if you went to everybody on the, anyone on the street and asked them how they know the earth is a globe, everyone's knee-jerk response, knee-jerk response would be, well, what are you talking about? It isn't, we, we know it's a globe. Everybody knows it's a globe. We know yeah. it's a globe. It's like, really? Yeah. How do you know? And then yeah. people start, and he goes, and if you push them, they'll start to get upset. And what he was saying was nobody, and, and he, he was, he was, he was ahead of his time, obviously. How did everybody in the world know it was a globe in 1946 if NASA wasn't even founded until 1958? It wasn't because they knew, it was because oh. they were told. Meaning there was no, there was no object, objective truth. It was that they were just told. They were told and their fathers were told going back generations. So by the way, don't feel bad. Anyone that's listening, it's like, no, 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 no. You know, you were born into this. People were everyone, your grandfather going all the way back to past your family tree was told five, at least 500 years ago that it was a globe. So what if it wasn't? And then they found out after teaching that for so, so long, would they tell people? God, no, I wouldn't tell anybody. Why would they? Uh, real quick, the, the slides I sent you, there's some science stuff real fast. Yeah, I'm trying Which to. Is, um, the, fish, the, the, the brown the prehistoric fish, by the way, that's a perfect okay. example. When uh, okay. when people say, "Oh, yo, science is right," right? Okay, so the what it says coelacanth extinct seventy million on it. That little shot. It's Give a me a second, sorry. Prehistoric fish, coelacanth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm aware. I'm aware. Extinct of that. at least seventy million years. Every freaking scientist in the world would have bet the family farm on it that it was extinct for seventy million years. Why? There's the fossil carbon dating. We we absolutely right. Yeah. And then the second shot is uh, called. Uh, it's a black and white shot. It says 1938 on it. Right. Okay. That's the British government. That's the first one they found off of South Africa in 1938. And then they just kept finding more and more off of Mozambique and Madagascar. And finally, the blue shot, the blue picture, that's National Geographic swimming with them during a TV special. Wait. Oh, yeah. I see. So th that's the fish that everyone thought was extinct. And now they're swimming with it. Yeah. 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 So uh, the, the thing is, well, you don't tell me that science can't get it completely wrong. In this oh, no. Case, science is wrong all the time. Yeah, but, but that's not my like argument against you. The, the, the point is, is that science, sometimes all of science, because I've heard this, it's like all the scientists can't be wrong. Oh, absolutely, they can be wrong. In this case, they were they were completely wrong. And not only were they wrong, they make fun of anyone that would go against this. Like, you know, in fact, that fish, when the early reports came out, and for years it took them, it's like, no, there's no way, there's no way, there's no, there's denial is the most predictable human response of all time. And it's like, no, it can't be, it cannot be real. And then finally they had to cave in and they had to readjust and, and completely backfill. I said, well, it's a, it's a living fossil. And uh, then, and so what you said, why am I bringing this up? I'm bringing this up. Uh, because science is wrong sometimes. Uh, 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 here's a perfect example. People, you've heard of Loch Ness, obviously. The Loch Ness monster, sure. right? Are there dinosaurs still swimming around in some of the lakes in uh, various parts of the world, including the UK? Well, no, in why not? I was going to say that um, in the Congo, um, which is like in the middle of Africa and yeah. Guinea Equatorial, they have uh, stegosauruses that have been undiscovered, um, but the tribal people eat them. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. But, you, well, so, but, that's, 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 but that's not what you were going to say. You were going to say no, something no, else. No, 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 it's good enough. Which is because we could have gone there, but the Loch Ness monster is a great one because it was like oh, it's super famous. The Stegosaurus, though, that's on murals and stuff, and how there are people living with Stegosauruses can't be Loch Ness monster. Is the same thing. It's like why can't you know people laugh and they go, oh, "You believe in the Loch Ness monster?" I go, well, "Why don't you?" Because it's been dead for at least a hundred million years. I go, "Oh, you mean like that fish right there? It's been mm. dead for hundred million years." 
they you were absolutely completely put it in a certificate you can frame wrong on that fish. Mm-hmm. And, well, but you're right when it comes to the to the plesiosaurs and or the stegosauruses or any other you know sciences, especially with cryptozoology or even dinosaurs. We'll use cryptozoology real fast, which is any animal which is supposedly mythical, right? So the giant oh, okay. and the, like giant the leviathan was an absolute myth. It's like, no, yeah. it's a myth. It's a fairy tale. It's like unicorn. It's like, no, nope, there's a giant panda right there. Okay, yeah. well, that's sciences. Uh, the giant uh, anaconda, that was a myth too. The giant squid, we still have never officially caught a massive giant squid yet. Why? They're too big. They're too fast. Even our best subs can't grab one of these damn things. The only reason we even know they exist is because we cut open whales and we found the remains of these things inside of whales. I know, it's super gross. So, no, it's not gross. It's, it's inhumane to cut up in a whale. Sorry, um, I was reacting yeah, on, 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 don't, on, on. Don't, don't, don't get me into started. I was being that. a girl. I was being a girl. Sorry. On the inhumanity of, of men. And uh, women get a pass. Most of the problems in this world are because of men. I'd be the first one to admit that. I'm a student of history. We, With the exception of find me a world leader, a female world leader that completely screwed up everything by starting a war. Cleopatra, I suppose she could count... But she was royalty, and Egypt was a whole different animal. But but the point was, Mark Anthony. She Meghan started- Markle. <laughs> what? Meghan Markle. Yes. <laughs> no, no, she couldn't start a war. <laughs> That's just the war of the tabloids, really. <laughs> anyway, yeah, there you go. The war Sorry, of the tabloids. Let's move on. Let's move on. So, so anyway, the point is that science gets things really wrong. So when I show, I sent you a picture, I think it's called 082062. It's a collage of different images. And oh, yeah. I'll hang on. I got it. Yeah. Every civilization in the world, even the Greeks at some point, drew the same thing when it, when it came to the world. They all drew a circular domed structure because that's what we see. The common sense. It's like when you watch a time-lapse uh, footage, anything online, time-lapse footage of the stars moving. Are the stars moving or are we moving? Well, well that's the I'll thing. Go. I remember lying down on the ground as a kid looking at the stars and it looks like the heavens are moving. And yep. I was told that that's because we're moving and that it just, it's a perception, but it's the wrong perception. Exactly. Who told you that, right? I, was, I think it was a teacher. Long, for the longest was- time before science became its own religion, that's how everyone saw. It's like, oh, the stars are moving. We're not, we're not doing anything, you know, but then science came like, no, 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 you're moving. I mean, think of the, and this was the beginning of the documentary, which think of the, the speeds that science says is happening right now. You are supposedly spinning on that basketball at a thousand miles an hour, right? That basketball yeah. is going around the sun at 60,000 miles an hour. I'm not going to convert it to kilometers for you. I'm American. Uh, yeah, that's all right. And then, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know math. That entire solar system is flying sideways through the galaxy at half a million miles an hour. And that galaxy is going through the rest of the universe at supposedly two or three million miles an hour. And you feel absolutely nothing. There is no parallax in the stars. The Zodiac never moves. No one talks about it, which is the Zodiac. You know, forget about astrology. Is that astrology? Okay. I mean, well, it's so like, that would you know. Mean, I'm you, an Aries. On, on, yeah, I'm, not a, I'm not superstitious. It doesn't but, matter. You know it's yeah. some of the cause. We'll just say the Big Dipper because the Big Dipper is not an astrology. Okay. Right? okay so the Big okay. Dipper is always the Big Dipper. And you're saying, and even though we're moving all these different directions, right? Parallax means that the close stars, um, uh, parallax, uh, when you're driving down a highway really fast, the telephone poles or whatever are going by really quickly, but the mountains in the background are going by really, really slowly. Why? Because the telephone poles are really close to you and the mountains are really, really far away. Same thing with stars. You've got stars that are 10 light years away, supposedly, and then there's stars that are 10,000 light years away. Uh-huh. But According to you always data. see the same freaking stars. It never changes. 2000 years of the zodiac and it, the 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 belt of Orion is still the belt of Orion and the Are you bear- saying that when I've traveled the world, say me when I traveled from Australia to Colombia hanging out with my family that the stars would have been the same even though I didn't pay attention? Well, no, no, not just that. No, well, no, but- no, 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 no. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, because uh, I no, thought no, no, no. I, this, this is good. This uh, is good, actually. Uh, if you're gonna go the star, what do the stars? Look that's what I thought you meant. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. What I'm talking about is when when you're Did looking I, at, I the, when you're looking at the stars, right? The the closest star is supposedly four light years away. That's pretty okay. close in light years, right? But there's okay. stars that are fifty thousand light years away. 
Well, okay. when you're moving an object, the star that's close to you, you should be able to see some sort of difference. You'll start to see the shifts where the star that's really close to you and the stars are really far away from you, you'll start to see differences, you know, meaning the star should move for you. There, there should be, the, everything should go out of whack because you're in three-dimensional space. They don't, they never, ever change. And science says, well, no, they do, but it's like, we're, so, we're talking about such vast distances, you'd never see it. I go, really, in a couple thousand years? Because the Zodiac has been around for a long time. The Big Dipper has been around for a long, long time and nothing has ever changed. That's fine. Either, either way, but it, that's another thing your people might say. Well, the, the constellations spin differently in the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere, right? We all know this. And the, and the stars see my place. I go, yeah, fine. Multiple projection systems. If, if you're in a planetarium and the planetarium is big enough, you can't be in two places at once. So you just create, we do this. We've been doing this in software for the last 20 years. You just create different projections based on it. Anyway, sorry. No, that's okay. So uh, I was just well, can I? Keep going. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So, all right. I have so many questions, just just generally. But um, one of the things that fascinates me, and it's not really, I didn't know this was a flat Earth thing up until recently. Um, but I'm very much interested in Admiral Bird. I've, I've I've been interested in him for a couple of years. Um, and so when I interviewed, I don't, have you ever heard of Tim Alberino, Timothy Alberino? No, but go ahead. Okay, so he is one of the foremost experts on Nephilim, giants, um, UFOs, which he can, which he thinks is not aliens, but like fallen angels and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, sure. I, inter I interviewed him. I asked him about Admiral Byrd, and his response was that he thinks Admiral Byrd's diary is a fake. It's it's not really completely genuine. But Admiral Byrd did he still agrees that um, Admiral Byrd uh, would have seen something beyond the ice wall. Now, um, yeah. on the flat earth model, on the flat earth model, a Antarctica is all the way around, right? Yes. Yes. Whereas what Admiral Byrd states, according to what he saw, there's more beyond. So this plate right. needs to be bigger because there was more, there were more, there was more waters. There was more green pastures. Yeah. You guys don't have that. And yeah. and according to what he said, um, no, no, what? No, you're right. You don't have the yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're, that, you're right. The white, the white area should be much, much bigger. Absolutely. Not that it should be bigger, but it should stop there, and then there should be more, more, more ocean again, yes. and then more land, yep. because he saw a mammoth, and he saw these Nordic beings that communicated with him, according to sure. to the diary. Um, sure. Anyway, so my point is that. Uh, I don't really know what my point is, but what do you think about that? <laughs> oh, no, 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 it's perfect. Um, and, and you're absolutely right. In fact, the only reason we that we don't put that on this sort of map it's, is it's because it's look, for, for me, it's like we can only, we blow people's minds doing one world at a time. If all of a sudden you say, oh yeah, there's different continents outside of here, unless you've got specifics on what the continents are and, and the lands that are beyond, well, it's like, yeah, we'll get to it eventually, but we start with this, but you're absolutely right. But Admiral you'll never Bird. see it. You'll never see it. But I'm um, sorry. I was look because I am so in this rabbit hole at the moment. I was looking at um, someone did a video. I think it was your acquaintance, David Weiss, yeah. who looked at a an encyclopedia from 1958, and it spoke. It, it, looked, it was Antarctica, and then it, they spoke about the wall. They spoke about the dome, yeah. the firmament. Whereas now it would never say that because um, apparently you guys aren't allowed to go to Antarctica despite the fact that there are plenty the of ships and stuff there. But. Yeah, Admiral Byrd is, by the way, I'm glad you brought that up. Admiral Byrd is- Yes, our, I love that topic. Uh, that's, well, that's how I got into Flat Earth. I didn't, oh. uh, five, six years ago, I looked into flat, I looked in Admiral Byrd because of the hollow earth theory. I thought the hollow earth theory was really, really intriguing. And yes, the diary- oh, Everyone's heard the about diary. you all, and, and anyone that's worth their salt is like, oh, I've heard about Admiral Byrd's diary. The diary talks about in 1926 how he supposedly went to the North Pole, you know, in a rickety plane, because really we didn't know anything until we had planes back in the early 20s. And For sure, which is why no one's probably ever been there. Right. And and he and he goes there supposedly and it turns into a journey into the center of the earth type scenario and supposedly supposedly that's where he saw the mammoth but let's get past that if it's fake it doesn't really matter i reckon there are mammoths i mean that we, that we see them in siberia they're in blocks of ice they're gonna oh, yeah yeah back. well well you know what scares me about that not to go off on a side road too far but, uh, yeah that's it that's that's not too far 
Oh, yeah, well, the, the class clear, frozen yeah. mammoths is what worries me. Is that the mammoths you know that they found with partially digested food in their stomach, which meant that the mammoth died super super quickly from environmental conditions. And oh. it's like, okay, what the hell killed them so fast? It was like a, a storm of we've gotcha. never seen. Anyway, mm -hmm. so Sorry, what intrigued me about Admiral Byrd was that. I would expect that, you know, if the North Pole, if there was all these weird, cool things in the North Pole, he'd just keep going, right? But no, that's where everything turned. And that's where I had to follow the, you had to follow the breadcrumbs where he would, the United States Navy, United States military reassigned him to the, to Antarctica in 1928. And that's where he spent the rest of his life, just flying planes around Antarctica for 1928, looking for something from 1928, all the way up until his death in 1957. Mm -hmm. And he just flew and flew and flew and flew back when there was nobody freaking down there. Uh, we won't even get into the Operation High Jump thing. Oh, I'm sorry. He took a break for World War II because he was the Admiral in the United States Navy. Intriguing little side fact. Who was the only nation that was down in Antarctica during World War II? The Gs? The Germans? Yeah. Yeah. So you, uh, is that true then? That, that is that, um, really absolutely the, true. Yeah, they so were that, the only No, no, the no. But is it one. true that A.H.? That man who led the National Socialists. Right. Did did he do anything there? Did did he get past the wall? Like, well, is there uh, any declassified info on that? That's the big question. Mm. It, you know, they were the only ones that were down there. the The story goes is that what we all we know for sure is that right after the Pearl Harbor um, surrender terms were were done, Admiral Byrd takes a full blown carrier fleet, right, thirteen ships, at least five thousand men takes them back down to Antarctica it, to do something. And yeah. it's like, okay, what the hell was he doing? And a lot, of, some, a lot of people say, well, he was trying to root out the, the rumors of the last Nazi base, which was supposedly down in Antarctica. And supposedly, if you believe the stories, he was thwarted. Now, the question is, did the Nazis drive them back? And if that was the case, why aren't there Nazis around? Whatever happened down there, and this is 1946. Whatever there were Nordic beings there or something. Or what? living there. Oh, yeah, beings. Very, very my theory yeah. is that Adam and Eve, this is my theory, I just made this up, but okay. my theory is that Adam and Eve obviously are the first human beings and their original condition is perfect because they were the original human beings. They were better yeah. than an Olympian, right? I'll go with that. Um, and so then they must have had two kids beyond, I mean, obviously they had um, Seth and Cain who were the two living ones yeah. and then a, a son daughters and blah 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 so they had shitloads of kids two of them went off and maybe found the ice wall or whatever and then those two beings are the Nordic beings that that he must have run into the only reason I say that is because um they the way he described them in the diary was that they were Nordic beings they were they were perfect in in every way and, and I don't believe that there are other types of beings unless it's like angels demons blah blah, blah. Sure. so I feel like it must have been that they were original beings that like and back then people used to live to like 900 years of age right anyway right. that's yeah. just me that's just that's me good. Good. does that sound like an interesting theory does no no that's yeah. good I, I like that theory so okay. whatever happened whatever he did down there didn't matter in 1954 because 1954 he goes on television and because he what he would do is he would do expeditions yeah. and then go back and do on television in 1954 sure. he said he had no worries it's like oh no we're doing another we're, we keep going and doing more missions and that's when he went to operation deep freeze which is operation uh 1955 56 and mm. so did they root out the last nazis well whatever happened by within 10 years from the, from then it was not even a concern it was the and he was willing to be public about uh, some other stuff. So it's like okay, well, the 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 rumor which I kind of like the was that the yeah. Nazi Germany asked whoever was down there for asylum, meaning okay. we want we want to go to the outer outer markers. We want to go outside the the barrier to to wherever. And they said, well, and I know what's like with you guys with um, high school dances, but it's like okay, fine, you can go out there, but you can never come back. Meaning mm. you, you, it's like, you know, you get your stamp on your hand. It's like, nope, sorry. I mean, you can't get back into the club if you're, if you're out, if you're out there and which we never saw him again. But what was interesting was Admiral Byrd goes on television and says, oh yeah, this place is made out of money and we're going to, we're going to be down there for a hundred years and it's going to be fantastic. In fact, we're going to be fighting over this thing forever. And then immediately after Operation Deep Freeze, they start putting in place the Antarctic Treaty, which is the only unbroken treaty in the history of the world today. 
Yeah, with, and that, that I find utterly mysterious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That well, that was the thing for me because I called BS on that. Everybody knows that nine out of ten problems in the world are tied to money. We are, you know, especially men and money and power. You know, this run world runs on greed and power and money. That's it. And Admiral Byrd said, oh, yeah, the whole place is made out of money. And he had every right to think that we were going to fight over it. And then all of a sudden, they just lock it down and they say, yeah, no one can ever go there ever again. Like, Why do you think that is? Why, wouldn't it be great for more continents? Well, more it would, wouldn't that be it like, would, incredible? Yeah, I, I thought of this right away. It's like, OK, so what's the what's the worst that could happen? Again, think, think of an Illuminati meeting. It's like it's like, should we let people down there? Well, you run into it's trouble not their with job to tell me if I if I that's ridiculous. So I keep going. Well, let's say you're an oil and gas company. Let's say you're the head of British Petroleum, and it's like you already know that there's tons of resources down there. Why can't you go down there? The reason is because eventually you're going to make a mistake. You're going to have a plane that's going to go off course. It's going to go in a direction you don't. The government does not want you to go. Um, helicopters, whatever. There's going to be places going to be off limit zones. I talked about this in the clues, which is a, it, it would be too much hassle. Okay, let's say you have a plane go off course and see something they shouldn't. What do you do? You got to take care of that, right? You got to you got to you got to neutralize that. Well, how many times can you do that before it becomes way too much of a hassle? And plus, you got to figure out who does it. I mean, it'd be really tough to do. I'm telling you this: if I put myself in the government's shoes. That's really tough to do. So somebody, some higher up says, yeah, you know what? It's really miserable down there anyway. Let's just lock it down. Let's just seal this baby off. And so they put the treaty in place and it's a, it's a miraculous. I've got cop. I send off PDF copies of the treaty. You can get it online. But it says that no corporation from any country in the world, not only can you not own Antarctica in any way, shape or form, you are not allowed to set up shop there forever. I mean, it's not even up for review until 2041. And this treaty has been around for a long time. And you know what about treaties. Treaties are broken. They're snapped snapped in half right and left. This is the only unbroken treaty. But ever. what about like explorers? Like if someone wanted to go to the Grand Canyon and explore, they're not allowed. Like no. why? No, well, you, can, you can go there. If you want to spend um, uh, Australian dollars, I think it'd be 20,000 Australian dollars. Actually, okay. it might be a little cheaper for you guys because you're close. By comparison, but in America, it'd be like fifteen thousand dollars. You could go out there, right? Take pictures with penguins and go to the Silver Pole. You know, supposedly the South Pole. By the way, the magnetic South Pole doesn't exist. You can look that up online. It's not even a secret. It's Isn't like, it below us? Is Isn't it below me? What the magnetic South Pole? The South Pole. Yeah, should be. Should be. But why is the compass not act like it is? Everyone keeps. It's just mind-boggling what people miss because we, especially in America, we aren't taught anything. We were taught nothing about engineering or science or physics or chemistry. We're taught none of this crap. So the, the compass is, remember, it's a two-pole system, right? North and south. Top of the basketball is north. Other side is south. Well, the compass will dominate north until you get to the southern part, and then it should dominate south. Never dominate south. I've had, In fact, I've had an Australian, one of my guys was an Australian military guy. And he goes, yeah, a little secret never dominate south the south pole is a completely a myth it completely does not exist they there's youtube videos of guys that are asking people that are living in antarctica they're all military or military science military contractors it's like what does the compass do nothing doesn't do damn thing um anyway so yeah admiral bird totally fascinating uh why Very did fascinating. He die? i think by the way he didn't die of natural causes you think after. so they killed him oh god he wouldn't shut up what about you? No, that's not true. I've seen interviews with him and he doesn't say anything about the Nordic beings. All he says no, is that no, there no, is no, 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 you are right. He does not mention the diary, which is why it's a good reason why they, some people say the diary is fake. However, he was really, I mean, if you, the, the interview where he was talking about uh, Antarctica and the big missions that were coming up, he was real quick to, he like, he mentions just, just haphazardly. It's like, oh yeah. And we're pretty sure there's uranium down there. Well, in 1954, you don't talk about uranium. Uranium's practically classified back then. And he's like, I, and he even said on camera, he's like, I probably shouldn't have said that. It's like, oh God. I mean, there, I mean, people that are watching that broadcast, it would not, even I, if, you know, I, if I was watching, I'd be like, yeah, we really got to do something about him because he's just a mess. What he, basically he let the fame get to him. He, he was a big time explorer, super famous. Everyone loved explorers back then. And he would do these missions and then he'd do a tour. 
you know, a big, you know, interview tour. Well, that's counterproductive. You can't have a guy, you can't have your lead guy doing interview tours all the time. He, he, someone, he's going to slip up. And but so, the thing is, if that's true, what you're saying is true. Why are you still alive? Why is David Weiss still alive? Why aren't you guys being? Sh why aren't you oh, dead? Because, because of the because of the credibility issue. Meaning, look, who are we? We're we're just social media people. Admiral Byrd was the youngest admiral in the United States Navy, highly decorated, highly respected. Be no different than if you had. Okay, I'll give you an example. They're not going to kill, right? They're not going to kill me. But the uh, but an astronaut, <laughs> if you took it, if you had an, a retired astronaut, if one of those guys came out, oh, yeah, you better believe that, uh, which is why you psychologically screen every one of them. And by the way, every astronaut, especially on our side, is U.S. military. Not, it's not oh. a secret. They're, they what are about? all high ranking Air Force guys. In fact, the, one of the guys I got a chance to talk to, he was a because uh, Piers Morgan, one of your UK guys. He asked me, it's like, are you calling your, your guy, um, uh, your astronaut, a liar? I said, no, he's a soldier. He's a colonel in the United States military, a full bird colonel. Most of them are high ranking. I go, you don't get to be colonel without being able to follow orders. So these guys aren't going to crack. So killing me? Nope. But if somebody, somebody in the military, in fact, I did a, I did a show where um, what, there was a Navy guy. Um, he was a Sparrow missile instructor for 10 years. United States Navy. And when we were, we had him on our show and he was talking about flat earth, they, the, the U S department of defense were pinging the hell out of our servers, just pinging them because they were, they were, they were constantly monitoring just in case. Now they weren't worried about him talking about flat earth. They were worried about him talking about the freaking missile system, you know, because all of a sudden it's like, Oh yeah. And the weakness of the system is I'm sure we would have been completely blacked out at that point because there's certain things you know you're in the military you don't get to talk about but us nah we're not a we're not really a threat not 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 in the grand scheme of things okay well um i was speaking to a friend of mine who was a pilot he told me not to name him i'm like relax dude i won't name you um I got pilots well this pilot said because i said to him that airplanes um only account for a flat earth uh, when you're piloting. That's what I said to him. And he said, that's wrong. He goes, that's not true. And mm. so what he said was, hang on, give me a second. Let me find what he said to me. There he is. He wrote, give me a second. You probably noticed. No, hang on. That's fine. Something about Meridian. Uh, give me a second. Why aren't you allowed in it? Hang on. Uh, okay, so I said, how come none of the electronics of a plane count for the curvature of the Earth? That's what has come up in this documentary. He goes, they absolutely do. They are using charts based on a prime, a prime of a prime meridian Earth. I don't even know what that means, but yeah. that's, do you know what yeah, that means? No, he, he, most pilots are completely out of the loop, meaning, you know, some people say, well, does every pilot have to know? No, they do not. As a matter of fact, that I have talked, I I sent you a link to a, my subject matter list. I had pilots contact me immediately. Everyone from military pilots to civilian pilots. Uh, one of my favorite is um, uh, a female pilot for many years at a KLM who they benched once she said, "Yeah," she goes, "I'm ninety percent sure the uh, the Earth is flat," and they said, "You can't fly again until you renounce that." Now, do the pilots know? Are the pilots know? No, they don't. Well, they, uh, but he, he just said that that um, it's because of a meridian. Yeah, he can say that all he wants. The instrument he's going off of instruments. He's going. Our instruments say this. It's like really. And also, really his friend has flown over Antarctica many times. So when flat earthers say that you're not allowed to fly over it, he, you're not he, allowed to fly. I'd love, love to know his friend. What flight pass? No one's been said, able to. Well, fly he wrote. Over unfortunately, there's no chance you can talk to him because he's an RAAF pilot. Whatever. What that a, means. Okay, so he says he knows a guy. Come on, you got to get your sources a little better than that. He knows a guy in the military that's uh, a, a British pilot. And this British pilot has flown over Antarctica, but he can't get any confirmation from him that he's flown out, out over Antarctica publicly. I can only quote publicly. Publicly, no one's been able to even even say they've flown over Antarctica since the 1970s. They've completely banned flights from Antarctica entirely, supposedly because some flight crashed into a mountain. All the flight paths. Oh, God. There's a whole other thing. RAAF, Royal Australian Air Force. Thanks, oh, Royal Casey. Australian Air Force. Fine. It doesn't really yeah. matter. 
the now again flying to antarctica is different from flying over antarctica there should be tons of flight paths that are shorter distances to flying over the the top of antarctica kind of like we fly over the supposedly over the top of the north pole all day long up here that's just one of the things we do but flights but especially civilian flights are not allowed to fly over over antarctica uh, if you want to land in McMurdo Base and the other stuff, look, there's nothing in Antarctica. People aren't allowed down there. We've got military bases and military sites. It's really like only 5,000 people in the entire continent right now. But as far as your pilot goes, look, I've sent, I put plugged in a subject matter list. I have got a ton of pilots that say the same thing, that say, no, we look out the front and it's absolutely tabletop flat. But we're told since we were kids that it's a globe, so it's got to be a globe. And I go, why don't you tell anybody, right? And that's what it was part of my clues. It's, it's, it, and the argument was like, who do we tell? If you're a pilot and you think the world's flat, you keep your mouth shut. Who, who are you going to tell? You're going to go to the, your your uh, company. You're going to go to Delta. You're going to go to United. You're going to go to the FAA. Who are you going to tell? The they they are so twitchy about pilots. In fact, I said I joked. I said you would be better off as a pilot to tell somebody you were chased by a UFO for two hours. Because that'll get you benched. If you say you're a flat earth, you'll get in for psychological screening. Every well, pilot, that, that was a Steven Spielberg joke, which was every pilot that sees something funny never reports it. There, you know, go ahead. No, that's fair. Um, so I was watching a lot of the flat earth material. Yeah. And one of, one, of the one of the points was this guy was saying how there were these Indian women, all Indian pilots, all Indian... Uh, it was female and so that was a big deal and so they went from san francisco i don't know let's right. say here over the north pole over yeah. antarctica sure. to get to india and so the guy was explaining how on 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 a globe it yeah. doesn't really make sense because um it just doesn't but then on on a flat earth map it makes more sense the trip so you're saying that people don't fly over Antarctica. That pilot of females did. Only they did. Um, the, the the only they did it, and it was with a flat Earth map. They even added. They even showed the map that they used in the article, which was surprisingly, which was which was a shock because it was that a flat Earth. Surprising. Do you know that that oh, one? Yeah, do I, do you know? I do not know the Indian female pilots thing. I have not seen yeah. that. One. But then again, there's so much content. I, it's, it's part of the it. app. It's part of the flat Earth app. Oh, oh, it's part of the fire. I, now I've got to call David, and it's like, what Indian thing are you talking about? He finds new stuff all the time. David, David's great, but the 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 short version of that is that every flight on a globe doesn't make sense. It, it you're taking these wild, huge arcs, usually up to the northern hemisphere and back down to accomplish something. But um, you can see it on your screen, on the chair, on that TV screen. You can yeah. see where your plane is and where you are at that point in time. Ah. Uh, uh, you can and you can't. Don't forget, uh, yeah, I'm not trying to, to pick, but don't forget the GPS system that puts that thing on the back of your seat on a plane. GPS system is an American military system. We invented it in the 1990s. And so, yes, will it tell you when you're going to your favorite shop? Yes, it'll, it'll, it'll get you there. Usually it's triangle. It's not, it's not satellite based though. The GPS system is the old Loran system, L-O-R-A-N. The L-O-R-A-N system is the old radar system that we had for years and years. And then at some point when the whole satellite thing is like, okay, we're just gonna put a different sticker on it and link it up to as many towers as we can, ground-based radar, which is why, by the way, when you look at airline travel, when it gets off the coast, right? And a plane is 150 miles or so, give or take, off the, the coast of any body of uh, any body of land, and there's no other islands around it, that plane will blink off when it comes to latitude and longitude. It'll go into approximated or estimated mode. And it's like, well, why? It's a 32 satellite blanket system. There's no way you would ever go into that. And it stays gone until it gets to, you know, shortly. Now, they know kind of where they are, but they don't know exactly where they are. They know their bearings. They know their speed. They just like, oh, just go off in that direction, which is why, I don't know if you're old enough to remember those um, two planes that went down in the, the um, uh, the Indian Ocean, triple sevens, state of the art, and it's like they still to this day. Talking about Malaysia right? Airlines, the what? Malaysia Airlines. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah the yeah, Malaysian yeah. Airlines. It's like, how do you lose triple sevens? Those are flagships. Those have. I did nothing. find that weird. I'm not going to lie, that was weird to me. Well, a friend of mine yeah, just because they didn't friend... know where they were when they went down because they couldn't track them. 
The people and the same thing. It's like, oh, that doesn't it doesn't just happen in the southern hemisphere. There are no islands between California and Hawaii, right? It's California and then Hawaii. That's quite a distance. <clears throat> when you leave California, you're heading to Hawaii, the same thing happens. You go into approximated or estimated mode. The GPS system is a complete sham. It's it's the old Loran system. They, they just said, oh, there's satellites. But it's not it's not a sham when I'm driving my car and I need to get from New South Wales no, but, to. But think, of, but no, it's not a sham when you're driving a car. But think about when the GPS systems came out. The GPS systems came out when the cell towers went up. That's when everyone, you know, the cell towers started going up, and then slowly but surely, cars got the GPS system. And even the GPS systems weren't perfect back then. Now they're a lot better. I've talked to guys in the cell tower industry who they'd say, oh, yeah, we're not bouncing off of satellites. There's no freaking bandwidth coming from those damn things. We're, we're 99, I shouldn't say 99, 98% eh, of the bandwidth of the world, I don't care if it's television or internet or whatever, is undersea fiber optic cables. They are not even shy about it. We have been laying cables forever. And we just can been laying them under the same route. And, and that's how you get most of your information, even what we're talking through right now. We're not talking through satellites. We're talking through fiber optics. They uh, just say, it just say, say they're satellites. That's okay. Um, a friend of mine wants me to ask you where the sun goes at night. Dun, dun, dun. And by the way, that's also in the app. And I'm so glad that the, the David Weiss app that you, you mentioned it. David Weiss has some wonderful things on this. The well, sun... I couldn't find anything on YouTube on my own. So I got the app so I could properly research. Yeah. There's, um, there's... And, and now I'm in the rabbit hole, but like, uh, it was easier to find because all of the videos on YouTube that I could find on flat earth are all the good ones or the ones that, that, that give you guys credibility. They're all unlisted. Yeah. So it's only through the app that I could do any research and we find were... out what, what you guys are all about. Yeah. yeah it's been the, the flat earth clues are six years old now. And back in the day, oh yeah, we were ripping and ripping YouTube to shreds, but then the big channels got involved. Oh, I know. And as you know, they got, but you know, more and more. Cause I mean, every big channel, I mean, look up, you want to have some fun type in uh, PewDiePie flat earth. <laughs> Guess what you'll see. Me. 4.6 million. Oh, you. No, yeah, yeah. It, and he never interviewed me. He just made, he just took a clip from a, like and a made fun party, of you. A, yeah, thing and, and made fun of me, which is the only, re the only reason you guys have any validity to my mind would be because Barack Obama mocks you. Um, a lot of these p bigger tech people try to censor you so much. Yeah. That in itself can be considered a form of, um, uh, validity because yeah, of why, that, and why also worry about us if we're not a threat. Yeah. Exactly. No, no. That, and that's and that's where you do kind of have me. And also, um, I think Hillary Clinton in one of these in one of the videos was talking about the firmament, saying we're going to get past the lower Earth orbit yeah, and we're yeah, going yeah. to shoot yeah. through. So you were going to answer the question about the sun and the moon, yeah, but um, the I, 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 go ahead, do that first, and then and then we'll talk about Hillary Clinton talking about the firmament. Okay, the sun does it does it set? No, it doesn't. It just goes off into the distance. And we've proven this time and time again. The, it's like, okay, why hasn't anyone noticed ever? We could see the sun setting off in the distance, right? We've seen it for thousands of years. And, well, you did and you didn't. Uh, God built this in a very, and God wasn't meaning to trick us. God was, I use the word test. Meaning, I, I <laughs> think we were going to figure this place out. Uh, God wasn't going to make it too easy, though. I mean, come on. God's given tests to all sorts of people over the centuries or millennia. Um, so what happens is the sun goes off into the distance, but what, again, what's changed is HD technology. Before HD technology, the sun just set. But now when you zoom in, that's where it gets interesting because what happens is when the sun goes off into the distance, remember, remember this atmosphere has a thickness to it. We're, remember, we're not breathing in nothing. And it's sort of like it is a thin version of water. So over a distance, that thickness gets more and more dense because some people say, why can't I see Japan from California? Why can't I see Europe from New York? And why can't... Because of disturbances in the air. Well, yeah. Well, or why can't I see Mount Everest from everywhere? Mount Everest is supposedly the tallest place there is. Why can't you see Mount Everest from everywhere if it's flat earth? And it's like, well, because there's a thickness. Um, no different than when you're underwater. I mean, you only have to go 200 feet down and it goes black. Why? Because the sun can't penetrate to more than 200 feet down. I mean, you lose all color. But, but even at 100 feet, you're losing almost all your shades. And when you get to 200 feet, it's completely black. Um, the Again, what we're breathing in here is just a thin version of that. So when you're looking off into the distance, the sun is basically just, it's going to sound weird, it's basically just fading away into fog. 
but you have to be able to zoom in with an HD camera with a filter on it to see it. So, but because again, it's so close to the horizon, yeah, the horizon, yeah, the uh, which is perfectly flat, it looks, it, it, flat, it, it flattens out, it gets squished, but if you zoom in close enough and the air conditioner, the, the, the light is just about right, you can see it, it just puffs away. It's amazing to watch. David Weiss has some wonderful videos on I've that. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's on, there's videos on my channel as well. I've got a playlist on experiments, uh, you know, what the sun. And again, like, for example, when you zoom in to a ship off in the distance, a ship pops back up into frame. Well, you can do the same thing with the sun if you have the right filter. Most people don't shoot the sun, though, because it's too damn bright. But you can see it. The sun doesn't set. It never sets. It just goes off in the distance. It's like, well, it's too big. So you can remember then the flat earth model, the sun is really, really tiny on here, which is why in most of the flat earth models that we, we draw them but back. Sometimes we can see the sun and the moon at the same time. How does the flat earth model account for that? How does the flat oh, earth model account for the seasons? How does the flat earth model account for the rising tides? How okay, does okay. it Look, really get too many questions? Okay. First one. Uh, why you do what I moon, say now. <laughs> that's right. Why are the sun and the moon at the same time? Uh, the sun and the moon at the same time would, in fact, it works better on our model than it does on a globe model because, remember, we're talking about a domed structure. So if you go to a planetarium, can you put up the sun and the moon at the same time? Yep, you can. It's it's that easy. I mean, it's, it's not not hard. Um, with seasons. Oh, seasons are easy, too. Uh, in fact, Rob Skiba had a wonderful video on this where he was showing that the sun it's kind of like a i know you're not old enough it's kind of like a needle on a record player right the, oh, the I know song, what that is, dude. song progresses what you, you're like what 22 so the sun progresses like in, <laughs> in, 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 in and out right so like a needle on a record player as the song goes on it goes in and then it comes out that's no different than the seasons the sun takes a different track every day like it, they say in the globe and it also it could also even change elevations we're not really sure but we know it does affect seasons. Oh, by the way, the seasons also aren't exclusive. And this will be tied to the tides, which is the, the seasons aren't all completely dominated by the sun. Yes, the sun is a massive heat source, right? But it's not the only source that, con that conducts energy in this world. And scientists will agree with you. It's like so the, the firmament, do you think the firmament gives us something? Do you think possibly, the firmament well, is doing it, something? It, it, it's, it's very, very possible, no question. But the things we know about, the jet stream, which is the upper air stuff that travels very, very fast, that conducts a whole bunch of energy. The biggest transfer of energy, though, is the underwater conveyor system, which is the massive current system that throws, you know, that, that circulates water around here. Mm -hmm. No different than the water in an aquarium, as it were. That transfers huge amounts of energy. And then the underground systems, the magma system, all these systems produce massive amounts of energy and you can you know you combine it with god's will and you can do all sorts of fun stuff when it comes to the seasons do does the moon affect the tides no the moon is just a clock system. i knew you would say that okay no i mean the moon is i'm going biblical here the moon is just <laughs> a light in the sky it doesn't do anything when it comes to the tides can you predict the tides based on the moon yeah that's the point of having the moon up there was that you could predict the tides the tides are completely the last thing you would do if you're going to, I'm not criticizing God here, because God, and I, I believe that his design, I could not improve on any of his designs. Trust me, and I'm a pretty clever guy. The last thing you would do is turn the moon into a massive directional gravitational field that would affect water. Kind of weird, by the way, if it only affects the oceans, not the lakes. But that's that's because it's an energy thing. Remember, um, uh, salt water conducts electricity. Fresh water doesn't. So why would gravity... Why, why would the moon and the whole gravitational force not affect lakes if it's not electrical? It's a whole other thing. But the, uh, the, the tides are affected from underneath. That's no different than what we do in when we build worlds, uh, in, you know, our simple versions of the world, which are simulations. We create something that's called a physics engine. And the physics engine does everything from down below. Uh, the physics engine doesn't, uh, gravity is created down below. The tides are created down below. We don't do anything up above. It's too hard to do. Okay. God is very efficient in his design. How's that? The you oh, is, you create if you're if you're gonna do the tides, the best way to do it is to do it from down below. You 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 affect the water from underneath the water. Okay. Um I, I have so many more questions, but I feel really selfish if I don't ask no, you. No, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, I'm I'm not gonna be able to sleep for a while anyway. 
Oh, no, okay. Well, uh, my other, why would Hillary Clinton say, first of all, actually, I have so many questions, I'm sorry, because I know that you guys claim that NASA has itself said we actually never went on the moon. Uh, but you guys don't show us any documents saying that or any proof in that respect. However, in saying that, I have seen other astronauts saying it. I don't know who it was. It was an old man. Oh, Buzz Aldrin, one of the, the guys. Buzz Aldrin. Buzz Aldrin said something like, we've actually never been on the moon. I saw that. I saw Louis, uh, Louis Armstrong. It was Louis. No, not Louis Armstrong. No, Louis, Ar Louis Armstrong's a singer. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the he's, black he's man too. Uh, Neil Armstrong. Neil, Neil Armstrong. Sorry. I saw Neil Armstrong and two other astronauts say that, oh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to be part of history, but, um, you know, I can either pretend that it never happened right. or be thrilled that it happened. And then all of them are smirking. Like, it's like, it's like they're keeping a secret. But then you have people like um, Neil Armstrong, Neil deGrasse Tyson. What's Tyson? Neil yeah. deGrasse. Let's call him Neil Tyson. Neil Tyson. Neil Tyson. Okay. So... There's a dude that went up into space using like a little self-made rocket ship or something. He went up, 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 like that. And it was, and then he said that all he could do was hear himself breathing. And then he commented that he could see the curvature of the earth. Mm. Now, Neil deGrasse Tyson said, oh, what a fool. He didn't see oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. The, that's, okay, let me let me describe that really fast. That's, okay, the, Felix, that's the Red Bull jump, the, the Felix Baumgartner Red Bull jump. Okay. Which is Red Bull, you know, the energy drink. They, yeah, sent, yeah, yeah. they sent a guy in a capsule. Um, yeah. he, was, he wasn't in a rocket. He just went up in a balloon. But that's fine. Um, there's been the rocket stuff is very, very limited as far as people going up in rockets. Very, uh, no military person has gone up at any decent thing. But anyway, he went up in a balloon to 130,000 feet. Yes. And he jumped out, right? Because it's like, oh, world record parachute jump. However, all the camera stuff that he was showing was showing this wild, exaggerated curve. And Neil... Okay. Neil did us a favor. Neil went on stage. Yes, that's said, my point. That was, he goes, that was dishonest. Now, he was defending science, but he helped us in the end, which he said, look, he goes, at 130,000 feet. It's yes, flat. Sir. Yeah, he goes, it's absolutely flat. He mm. and and But that's interesting because a lot of people, people that might even be listening, I've had so many people over the last six years that have said, no, 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 I've seen, oh, oh my God, if I had a, a nickel for every comment. They said, haven't you ever been in an airplane, you big moron? You, you say the curvature from an airplane. It's like, oh, do you? I go, well, my challenge is now four years old, still stands. I go, if you see a curvature from the airplane, you take a picture of it, you hold a straight edge up to it, you know, on your laptop somewhere. Uh, I've and, seen this. I've and, seen this. And it's yes. like, tell me, it. show me where the curve. If you still think there's a curve there, you um, you send it to me. I will quit Flat Earth tomorrow. It's been four years. No one's ever sent me anything. And the reason is because the curve isn't there. It's not, and again, I'm not trying to be mean to anybody. It's not that you don't see the curve. It's that you want to see the curve. There's a big difference. And that's straight up yeah. oral, which is, and now Neil, again, did us a favor when he said that it was absolutely flat. He was basically saying, and I've used it against people. He said, he said, no civilian has ever seen the curvature, right? Mm -hmm. And so when people come at me and they say, and I made a video just for that point, I say, fine. So Neil deGrasse Tyson, the most famous scientist in the world, he's wrong and you're right. And because I've had people say they've seen curvatures from every element. I've had, I've had a thousand people say they said, oh, I've seen the curvature from the beach. Like, really? You sure about that? Again, it's, it's straight up conditioning. It's, we are told there's a curve so many times, starting from when we're kids, that we just buy it. Why wouldn't we? I mean, the, well, that's why, yeah, that's why when my friend said, use your common sense, um, I'm like, my common sense tells me that I can't stand on a ball. Well, that's not a bad argument. It's not, it's not a bad argument. I mean, but, but yeah, the ball, the 3D ball in space, eh, I mean, I know, again, science will come back. It's like, well, no, the gravity's equal on either side. So you wouldn't feel like you were standing on the top. There is no top. If you, if you're, if you're a mainstream scientist. They will say that it's that it's uh, everything's the top, and so you you never ever feel it. It's like yeah, sorry. the the problem The problem that the globe has is that we figured out our community figured out a way to explain the universe that is easier to understand than the solar system. But all of the algorithms mathematically make sense. And Only they because match. they assumed the algorithms ahead of time. It's like okay, how do you know the sun is ninety three million miles away? I can't answer that. Well, exactly. Nobody could. They just they did. They assumed it. 
the sticks and shadows argument, which is the, the, the sticks and shadows, meaning you have a an ob, you know, a, a stick on the ground and you shine a flashlight on it, it'll generate a certain shadow. And you move the, the flashlight around, the shadow will move. We've seen shadows move. Well, it works on a ball. Uh, if the sun is 93 million miles away and hundreds of thousands of kilometers wide, yeah, that works. But it also works if the sun is really, really small and really, really close. Like, I don't know, 50 miles wide and 3,000 miles up. By the way, that's what we think it is. Which is one of my let, let's get into let's get into five we'll g I'll give you five quick science things that I threw at a physicist uh, over here all right because there there was a German television team that asked me they said come up with five quick science things that uh, uh, any a PhD in science can can go after and I go okay fine F real quick uh, my five best points why the Earth is flat you ready we'll rip through them. Long distance photography, which we covered. We see things way too far. The curvature of the earth, which we didn't define, is supposedly eight inches per mile squared, which is eight inches per mile per mile, which means after a certain period of time, like the basketball, what else do you, there would be objects on the other side of the hill. I don't care what sort of telescope it is. You should not be able to see them. They're gone. They're on the other side of that ball, right? But we can see this. We, we In fact, the only limit is the density of the atmosphere. We can see stuff that's way, way further. Uh, number two is gravity versus the vacuum of space, which we talked about. Uh, gravity always will lose to the vacuum of space. If you want to call it pressure differential, that's fine. Third is the um, eclipse shadow, which ties into what we were just talking about, which is the eclipse shadow is too small, meaning the moon supposedly is 2,000 miles wide. That's what they say it is. But the eclipse shadow... It goes along the ground. If you guys have ever had an eclipse run across the ground in Australia, I don't know if you have. Uh, it's only have the blackout zone. Uh, it was covered in the documentary, but anyway, the blackout zone where the sun is completely eclipsed is only 70 miles wide. So that's 90, that's 90 something percent decrease. Why is the shadow so freaking small? And they said, well, because it's, it's condensing like a lens and, and the shadow is really small. I go, okay, first, we can't replicate that here with anything. When you walk by a wall and the sun's next to you, your shadow doesn't shrink down to the size of an action figure. It's either actual size or longer, long shadows. You know, at the end of the day, your shadow is freaking huge. Never, ever gets smaller, only gets bigger. Um, and if it's like, if, and even if you said, even if you can convince me, it's like, oh no, it condenses down. I go, wow, good. Why isn't it condensed down with the earth then? Meaning if the earth is in front of the sun and the moon's over here, why don't we see a blackout zone on the, on the moon? That's uh, only about 250 miles wide. We only see waxing and waning crescents. We see blood moons. The, the, the moon should turn into a giant eyeball. Never, ever happens. Fourth would be the moon temperature. Fun one to check out. A wonder, you know, I'm pretty sure it's on David Weiss's thing. Moon temperature. The moon is cold. And he's like, well, it's colder at night. No, no, the moon generates a cold light. The moon is completely, and this goes along the biblical side of things. The moon is its own complete entity. The moon doesn't reflect sunlight. The moon generates its own light. And it's a cold laser light. And you're going, oh, you can't prove that. It's like, oh, yeah, we can. We've got point and click. Do I have mine lying around here? Point and click infrared thermometers. I don't have mine in front of me. You can buy them at hardware stores. They usually use them to test engine blocks, point and click thermometers. You take something in the moonlight and the moon shade, right? So again, I won't convert it to, to Celsius for you, but let's yeah. say 80 degrees in the in the sunlight, but it's 70 degrees in the shade. We all know this. It's cooler in the shade, right? Not in the moonlight. In the moonlight, it's the exact opposite, meaning it's actually colder in the, it's actually warmer in the shade that it is in the moonlight. And it's like, well, no, it's because it was the sun that lit it up during the day. It's like, no, you can do any test you want. We've done copper strips. We've done infrared. We've done the whole nine yards. It's up to 13 degrees Fahrenheit warmer in moonshade than in the moonlight. <sighs> the moon is cooling things down. And I didn't even know this was a technology until, in fact, I, I was in this thing for like a year before somebody brought this up to me. And they say, and basically it's something you can do at university. You can, you can change the frequency of a laser and actually use it to cool down things. And now it's in certain health products, uh, certain beauty things. Yeah, it's a cooling okay. laser. Rate. It's super, super oh, weird. Okay. But what is, <laughs> sorry, number five. Well, number five, last but not least, um, the Van Allen radiation belt question. Simple question. We, you, it doesn't matter if you know science or not. NASA announced in 1958 that there's a band, huge bands of radiation around that basketball called the Van Allen radiation belts. Super, super deadly. No one should ever go there ever, ever, ever. 
around around the Earth. Yeah, yeah, sixty thousand miles thick and covers everything, right? Except okay. for maybe some donut holes in the top and the bottom. So okay. Okay. okay, Van Allen radiation belts are they deadly? Yes or no? Simple question, but it's a trap because if you say yes, then I go okay. So no, I say no. Let's say no. They're 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 no no. Say say yes. They are deadly. If they're deadly. Then how, there's only three things that can shield you from radiation. One, when you go to the dentist's office, they put that lead thing on you. Lead. Yeah, I, I, lead do it. I put it on them all the time. <laughs> yeah, lead lead, lead will stop radiation. Um, gold will, gold, but it's really, really expensive. Gold, gold is actually twice as dense as lead, but nobody knows that because who has that much gold? And um, <clears throat> a whole bunch of water, which they use in power plants. Water will stop it. But all these things are really, really big and heavy. What what did the Americans use for shielding when they um went to the moon and back multiple times in the sixties and seventies? No idea. Uh, nothing. They they used aluminum and plastic. Neither of those things stop radiation at the slightest. Nobody died. Nobody got radiation poisoning. Nobody got cancer. There's still five of these guys limping around today. Every one of them died of natural causes. Without it's like how they do it. And then you come back. So well, okay. Well, it's not dangerous. I go okay. So look up a little video called Orion Trial by Fire made by nasa where they talk it's made it's on the nasa.gov website where they talk about how they can't test the mars capsules because they haven't figured out how to solve the earth radiation problem and they're very specific about it they say oh yeah the van allen radiation belts super super deadly we can't send people up there yet because we haven't solved the problem it's like what are you talking about you, you solved it perfectly in the 60s you never had a problem with it using old technology what's your problem now what would what, what, you, you forget how to how to do it? Um, so between those five questions, and those are simple, right? Super questions, right? Uh, send them to that the physicist out in Georgetown. Folded. That was it. He said, "Yeah, we're not doing this." And that was it. And it was his idea. He was the one that, that set up the 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 interview. I I was called in just the last minute, and I came up with these questions, and that was it. Now, to be fair, a lot of scientists their tunnel vision that they can only speak to their specific discipline. But these, he should have been at least go after one of these, and he didn't. He said, "Nope, not gonna, not gonna touch it." There's in fact most scientists don't, don't even know what to do with the whole concept because, again, they're it's it's tough. Most people, if they have a master's degree or higher in any sort of physical science, won't even address it. It's like, well, okay. no, it's beneath them, which is like, um, all right. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop asking questions and actually I I still want to keep asking questions because I feel like I have so many. But um, right. someone wanted me to ask you about the laser test. Hang on. Ah oh, yes, the laser test from the documentary. I know something about story. water. Hang on. What did water he write? Or laser? No, he said both. I think. Ask him yeah. about the lake laser test. Lake laser Le test. Oh, Lake Balaton, maybe. Mm. Um, we okay. Um, we're not going to do the laser test then from the documentary. If, if somebody asks, that's fine. So we've done a bunch of lake laser tests. Um, David's got them on his app. I've got them on on a playlist. Uh, the biggest one we did was in Lake Balaton in Hungary. We actually had the Guinness Book of World Records there with us. I did not go because I was not going to freeze my butt off in in a frozen lake. It was frozen. You should have gone. I'd never be able to travel again. <laughs> what? You should have gone because now nobody's ever going to be able to ever travel again. Sorry, keep going. Thank you, by the way, for mentioning that because that made me sad when I figured this out. Uh, I did a rant on that. I got my first guideline strike um, uh, yesterday, I think, or two days ago uh, because I talked badly about the vaccine and YouTube. And I had, remember, I've been doing this for six years. I got 1,500 videos on my channel, never gotten a guideline strike. And they're like, and the new thing is like, yeah, you ah. cannot, you, what? I have. I've got oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you've seen the message. You cannot contradict the World Health Organization. No. On, on YouTube, and we're like, it's like you bastards. Anyway, so anyway, the laser, laser lake test. We yeah, we shot a laser. We've done laser tests for a while. Um, we don't even really do them anymore. But we bought some military grade lasers because uh, most people don't know the the pen lasers. They start spreading out over a certain distance, uh, two feet per mile, to where. And that was Jaren's, one of Jaren's problems. We'll, we'll get into that later. But yeah, we shot lasers over frozen lakes. Well, you don't even have to shoot lasers now. But the reason why we do it is because, well, lasers are absolutely straight. They shoot straight. So, But you have to have a guy on the other side that's like, you have to line it up. You got to make sure you blind him with this laser. And it, it takes a little, it's harder to do than you might think because you have to get some precision stuff to line it up. But a laser, but the military has been doing it for years. Um, uh, in fact, my favorite is the the missile guy. 
he was the first guy to say, yeah, our missile systems, we use a two degree beam radar, which is very similar to a, a laser. We're shooting at 50 nautical miles. When we did Lake Balaton, we were shooting at 40 kilometers, I think. And yeah, we, we lined it up perfectly. Um, in fact, we even, we were doing laser tests and things like that for so often that we finally figured out a way to do it during the daytime because you can only do laser tests at night and because you have to compete with the sun and somebody in California came up with this brilliant idea. It's like, no, why don't you use mirrors during the daytime? It's like, what? That's awesome. And so they did, they bought like a $10 mirror at Target and went down to the, over the side of, you know, this lake in the freaking desert and was reflecting sunlight at uh, back at the, at the thing. It was perfect. It was the ultimate laser. Um, yeah, we've never had a test fail in that regard. Never. Okay. The one that was in the documentary, you got to remember, they hated us. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. The one that was in the documentary, the, um, Jaron didn't have line of sight. That's completely on him. Totally his fault. Again, the, if anything, the system was the one that got him because he went to Google Earth and just assumed this piece of land that he was shooting over was flat. And then he brings in the film test, the film team, never tested it out for himself. Never even bought. In fact, we didn't even know. Because he was convinced, I suppose. Of his oh, yeah. Well, he's like, well, it's got to be flat, right? The Google Earth says it's flat. And he goes down there two months later and, and does a live stream. It's like, oh, he goes, I'm sorry. We didn't have line of sight. It's like, dude, why'd you bring the freaking film team out there, you know, for the documentary if you didn't know if it was absolutely flat? Eh, live and learn. He Now he, he's like, the, our advice to everybody is like, check your site out first before you bring in a, a news team or whoever it is. Because if you're wrong, you you know, they're going to go, oh, look, look, which is how the movie ended. They they ended the movie with Jaren's test. and the, But it played well and it still exposed a lot of people to it. So I'm not going to regret it. I probably okay. wouldn't have changed, it, changed the documentary with that ending. I would have changed it probably a little bit. But it made the audience feel safe because it freaked people out. Most people that watched it, because I was sat in studio audiences, most people the first 20, 30 minutes didn't even think it was real. Meaning they thought it was a, um, a, a mockumentary, a piece of docufiction. They didn't, they, they thought it was like a parody. Those and are then, hard. Those, those are easy to fall for. I was watching one about mermaids and I was like, oh my gosh, mermaids are real. And then I'm like, no way. And yeah, then, this, and was, then no, this was the reverse of that, where everyone thought, oh, okay, it's not real. And then all of a sudden, I, I mean, I sat next to people and they're like, wait a minute, there's something really scary on the internet and I don't know anything about it. And it's like, because there's all these different celebrities, uh, you know, mm. that, were, that were into this. And uh, anyway, keep going. Uh, okay, so this, this is a question from um, a friend of mine who also happens to be um, a viewer. Hey, Mark, when did you figure out that the moon landing was fake? In America... This is a running theory, even with non, non flat Yeah, yeah, yeah. In America... Like, not many we... non-flat earthers are like, yeah, it was staged. Yeah, we were questioning the moon theory uh, almost immediately after we stopped going to the moon, which was in 1972. The problem was, is there was no internet, and the only way for people to share ideas was to go to, like, conferences. And these were, you know, usually, I hate to say this because it sounds so weird, usually you had to share information at, like, UFO conferences. Oh. Because, you know, anyone that believed in UFOs, well, you probably didn't believe the moon landing were real, or you thought it was a secret space program or whatever. So we were questioning it for a long time. The big reason is because um, production mistakes. And you will understand what I mean. Uh, so there we there are entire websites and huge channels dedicated to movie mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. People that, you know, in productions, I mean, even Lord of the Rings, the very first Lord of the Rings movie, um, there was a car driving in the background when, when the guys were leaving the Shire because they didn't catch it in editing. You know, things get missed in movie mistakes all the time or in movies all the time. Why? Because you shoot things out of sequence to save money. We're going to shoot all the desert scenes. We're going to shoot all the car chase scenes. We're going to shoot all these things. And it's out of sequence. It's not chronological. Yeah, and then they have to edit it and put it all together. Yeah, then you have to fill in. You got to bring people in for reshoots. It's like, why did the actor look like he gained 10 pounds since, since that last scene? It's like, because he gained 10 pounds. He's shooting it <laughs> six months later, right, after his physical trainer was gone. So what was happening was the nerds, when, when the internet started firing up, the nerds were breaking it down. I'm a big nerd. Uh, we're breaking it down. They were looking at stuff like that picture I showed you. They're staring at things. They're going, hey, wait a minute. Beforehand, you know, back in the 60s and 70s, all we had was magazines. And it was like, you know, no one cared. It's like, oh, look, America's and the moon. But when you start analyzing the, the shots, things didn't add up. You started seeing more and more plot holes. And that's one of my big things. I am a huge believer in good writing. You know, it's like if, the, if there's if a movie 
makes mistakes too many times. It's the suspension of disbelief. It's a human condition. We want to believe things. It's why you cry at the movies. Right? It's why you're crying. You, you know who the actor is. You know the production company. You're sitting next to people. You know it's a movie. Why are you crying? Suspension of disbelief. You are invested in the story. Hell, there's people that cry in books all the time. It's like, it's like <laughs> why are you crying reading a book? It's because mm -hmm. you're you're invested in the story. If there's too many things that you that lose you, you've probably done it. You've watched a movie. And it's like, yeah, I'm not into this. Click. It's gone. Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's like yeah it's not it's my well that shouldn't happen in real life and it certainly shouldn't happen in the news and that's what we're talking about here meaning you know we've now beforehand the people that were analyzing movies and books and all this other stuff they started analyzing historical documents and if things don't start matching up that's when you run into problems and the moon has been a, an issue we just keep finding more and more stuff and once social media came out Oh yeah, I mean, most Americans have problems with the moon, the moon missions. It was. It was. I've seen. I've seen footage on TV shows, and it's yeah. all acted. But people were sitting in front of their TV during this moon landing, crying like, "Oh my gosh, superhumanity's done!" It doesn't seem like people had a problem with it. It seems like they were like, "Hooray, we're so Not great!" Humanity's like, what? Well, yeah, in the late late sixties and early seventies, sure. But but again, uh -oh. by the late seventies, the reason why. The, the, the government said the reason why they closed down the program was because they said that people were getting they bored. They destroyed it. Yeah, they destroyed the, the, the technology yeah. and it'll be too difficult to rebuild. I saw I saw all of the NASA people saying that and I did yeah. find that unusual. Yeah, and so they shut it down and that was brilliant, and, and which was they shut it down in 1972. And but China's been on the moon since then and India and I think Australia? I don't remember. No, no, no. The only six countries that suppose, you can look this up, c countries with launch capability, um, United States, Soviet Union, China, India, Europe, and Japan, right? Oh, okay. Well, suppose, but you, but so, that's weird because uh, didn't Israel crash land something a year and a half ago on the moon? It's like why weren't they on the launch list? It's like oh, okay, um, but, but but the big thing was for me, and that's part of the clues was, and I thought it was a complete just anomaly was there were no pictures taken of the Earth from space from 1972, which is the official blue marble shot. You can look it up. 1972. There were there was only one shot taken. And I, I'm not. I'm not. I agree. I, where, I, where I agree with flat earthers is the photos. I know they're not real photos. No, I know they, that they're they not are. real photos. They never. I, no, I know that. But what you don't take into account as a flat earther is that prior, um, before computers ever existed, there have been photos of the moon, of not of the moon of the Earth prior to 1968. I think. No. Hang on. What does my no, research? No, it couldn't have been the only shot. No, 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 I got to correct you here. I'm going, you know, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I'm yeah. telling you that I was watching a bunch of videos the last three days that are pro your argument and against your argument. And the, one the, of the one of the people said that um, that there there are photos of the moon prior to. to oh, photos of the Earth. Of the Earth. Sorry. Yes. The, well, they would be they would be wrong in the sense now if they're going to pick and say, well, those partial photos, it's like, all right, fine. You want to say it's partial photos, but the first full disc photo of the Earth. I, I know mean, that's doctored. I'm I'm not. I, I, that's well, fine with me. Well, yeah, but that's the only one they released was 1972 from Apollo 17, and the and and I know this for an absolute fact for for a couple of reasons. One was back in 2000 when I was running a, a tech support thing. Um, I wanted to put different shots of the earth. I thought it'd be kind of iconic. Again, yes, you know, I've seen that. Yeah, they're yeah, all put, different. Put, put and all, all the dimensions screens. of the land are different. But when I, well, but when I did a search back when the, you know, back in 2000, there was only, literally only one picture of the earth. On I, Every search, it was the same image. It was the same blue marble shot. And then um, oh, and the, the second blue marble shot wasn't even taken until 2015, summer of 2015, after we started ramping up. And you're saying, well, how do you know that? I know that because Obama was the one that announced it. You know, the you know, second blue marble shot of the Earth. And it was announced on, it was Scott Kelly, the astronaut, supposedly was the one that did the press release on it. It's like, wait, you guys went 43 years without another blue marble shot? All these missions, all these probes, no one took a second blue marble shot. And look, I'll, I'll give, you the, the, give you the quote. I mean, you can look it up, but it's, it is absolute historical fact. Al Gore the vice president of the United States here, he at one point when he was in office 
he wanted a giant globe on his wall. And he said this during the Inconvenient Truth 2, the, the sequel to it. And he calls up NASA and he says, hey, I, I know you got this blue marble shot from 1972. You got anything updated you can give me? It's like, yeah, no, we don't have anything. And that inspired him so much that he tried to create the satellite program to we get another shot of the Earth. And of course, it was delayed and delayed. And then he you know, oh. eventually left office and that, that program was scrapped. Doesn't the satellite the go against your argument? There are sat I've seen, I know you're going to say it's a green screen maybe, but I've what? seen, um, there aren't there, aren't there like satellites that sometimes astronauts need to fix, like the Hubble telescope, or I, I don't know, no, not a telescope, so that was a stupid thing to say. No, but, no, astronauts don't fix satellites. Or engineers then from MIT nope, or something. Nobody, nobody goes up and touches satellites ever. They well, are, something, you know, something is floating an orb. I don't yes, know what the yes, word yes. is. Are, are there Do things up there? Yes. Something? Yeah, yes. I don't speak Do science. Okay. I'm sorry. And, and, no, it's all right. Do satellites exist? Yeah. How do they get up there? That's the bigger question. You can look up, look it up. This is not a big secret. NASA is the biggest. They hang from the firmament. <laughs> well, no, no, no. NASA is the biggest consumer of helium in the world. Most people don't know that. They have the majority stock in all helium production. They can bring, and they're not shy about telling people. It's like you can launch a satellite from the ground, usually in your neck of the woods. In fact, there was a wonderful story. I think it was shot in Australia. You can go up to four tons, which is uh, 8,000 pounds. I'm not going to do kilos for you. <laughs> You're fine. So it's like if you can launch 8,000 pounds on a balloon, then why would you ever put anything on a rocket? Generally, you don't. Uh, it is <coughs> Sorry. So no, do satellites exist? Yes. Uh, what are they most of the time? Probably suspended by balloons. No, no doubt in my mind. Uh, I know it sounds weird, but you can look that at more. I, I'll, I'll yeah. send you videos on it. It is bizarre. I didn't. I had the same reaction you did. It's like no. It's like yeah, yeah. When you look at it, it's they've been doing it since 1958. Literally since NASA was founded. You can send up any package you want up to four tons on on balloons. So it's like, okay, well, why, why would you send anything on rockets? Like you wouldn't. You fire rockets off to build whoever it is, but you don't have to put a payload on there. It's okay. It's absolutely amazing. The it took the and you're saying it's too big. It's too big of a lie. NASA couldn't fake everything. It is. Yeah. Think how small though they started. NASA when they started out was a very small organization. Uh, yeah. With the old saying, "What a tangled web we weave." It just got bigger and bigger and bigger to where now we're paying them $28 million a day. Aren't they lucky? Which, which is an amazing amount of money considering what they're not doing. But And and what have they yet, yet to show for it? No moon bases, no Mars missions, no nothing. I mean, the space shuttle program, that's been, that was just, that's been scrapped for, what, 15 years? Most people don't even know. Space shuttles are not even a thing anymore. We, it's like, oh, yeah, we had space shuttles. No, you know, you don't. You, you scrapped that. And Russians don't have... By the way, let, let, on a different thing, why did the Russians quit? Remember this? I don't know. Nobody but knows. The Russians Nobody. were the first in space, even yeah. the low orbiting area, at least. I Russia mean, you, was you supporting can't deny me. that. I can tell you exactly why. They were crushing us. They were absolutely crushing. You can look up the space race magazine covers. We were like toe to toe, Russians versus Americans. I know. I remember. I, I, I've researched this when I was not red pilled on anything. Yeah, I just, that was a thing. Cold, right? That was a cold war. And then we get to the moon and they quit. It's like in the history of sports, I've never heard of such a thing. It's like the first guy crosses the finish line and everybody just walks off the course. Not only did they quit, but they, um, they, they dismantled pretty much everything. There was no sp uh, Soviet Union space thing afterwards. But oh, yeah, that's not true. Union. I was watching the Eurovision Song Contest, which is something Australians love to watch. I don't know if Americans know what the Eurovision Song Contest is. And they announced the winner in the space shuttle, which is a bit retarded. I don't really understand. Like, I guess they were trying to go, I guess it was held in Russia, this particular song contest. And they were in the space shuttle saying, and the winner is blah, blah, blah. And, uh, Was that acted? Were they in wait, a... Wait, wait, wait. Was it an American space shuttle or Russian space no, shuttle? No, Russian. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, I'd love to see that footage because the Russians had a space I'll shuttle I'll see if program. I can find the year that, that, that they hosted 
please, please send it to me when you get a chance because I'd love to use it because okay. that, that's one of those other things. The Russians had a space shuttle program that we never talked about. Okay, you want to know why the space race completely imploded and we never talk about the right because we americans the maybe behind the scenes stopped them i assume well is that what you're is that what you're alluding to it was more of an agreement the the russians the americans at the highest levels not really enemies they don't really like each other though <laughs> well we know but that's the lower levels the lower levels oh yeah we taught we teach our troops you know we have the communist threat we're two completely different systems but the highest levels there are certain secrets you have to join forces with and get them oh yes that we were okay. landing supposedly our space capsules capsules in Russian territory for years recently. It's like, why aren't you landing them in the water? Can't land them in the water anymore. There's too many yachts out there. You can't take any chances. You don't want not not that you're going to hit them, but you don't want people to see what's really coming down. Here, let, let's do the space race really quick. So imagine Go this. Ahead, please. You, you cancel. <laughs> the, here's where you cancel the space race. You ready? The Americans. Any movie studio will tell you this, and because everything in Hollywood is done in pairs. So you have two competing studios, right? Mm. Across, remember moviemistakes.com, right? The chances, the, the multiply that by multiple studios and you'll never ever get them right. So what I'm saying is, is the Americans can't fake the moon and the Russians can't fake the moon simultaneously. Because if they do, you're going to have nerds that are going to be like, Hey, why is the Russian footage look so much more brown? Why are their rocks different? Hey, wait, don't why do they have stars? And, and all that's all it takes. If the Russian footage differs in any way from the American footage, the whole thing freaking falls apart. And they knew this. They they're like, yeah, there's no way we can shoot in Arizona and they can shoot in Moscow. It's never gonna match up. Never ever gonna happen. So you're it, saying it, that the Russians faked the first man, Yuri Garaman. Everything. Everything was faked. No one's done anything. The whole thing was fake. And it was fake for a very, very specific reason, though, which is people say, well, why would you fake it? It's like, okay, if you don't fake it, eventually private companies are getting, going to get involved. And the last thing you want to do is have some private – because remember, in Na over here on our side, NASA is only the organization. All the parts are made by military contractors like uh, Boeing and McDonnell Douglas and Raytheon and all these guys. You don't want those private contractors. There's the guys with all the tech. You don't want them trying to do their own space program. You really, really don't. Because if something goes wrong, like, I don't know, they run into a firmament, then the, the gig's up, right? So you militarize space as fast as you can. Firmament. There you go, firmament. And the, you militarize space as fast as you can, and you keep it militarized for as long as, as, long as you can. You say, well, uh, Elon Musk and, and Tesla and, and SpaceX and Google Google um, Blue Horizons and Virgin Galactic down in your neck of the woods. Right? It's like, yeah, what have they done exactly? The only one that's doing supposedly anything in SpaceX, and they launch from American military bases, and they are completely compromised. That Roadster in space, that red convertible in space. Oh my God! I didn't like two or three weeks just on that one alone because it was it made no sense. Absolutely made no sense. That car should have been, if it was actually space, would have been shredded by the heat differences, by the cooling temperature, by the vacuum. That thing should have been in pieces. Should have been shredded. And yet they called. They, they had three HD cameras on it. It was absolutely perfect. And by the way, don't think it was an accident that all the logos were left off it. Two two companies, Tesla and SpaceX, one private, one public. And there's no logos on that car whatsoever. Even the mannequin didn't have a logo on it. It's like, why? Just in case something went wrong. They like distance yourself. By the way, it, Tesla, the car, right? Supposedly the only car in the history of car companies to have a car in space. No Tesla dealership has that thing on their, that thing should be on their wall at all times in the background. When you're at that dealership, there should be Tesla in space. Never happened. No commercials, no advertising campaigns. It was like they were being really delicate about it. It's like, is anyone buying this? And social media wasn't buying it. So they decide, yeah, let's just kind of push that off to the side. We'll let people think it was a thing, but we're not going to advertise. It's brilliant. Okay. Um, someone wrote, uh, what's the story behind your sports bet ad? I don't know what that word they're talking oh, about. Oh, yeah. I was down. I was. I did a commercial, TV commercial down in Melbourne for you guys. Oh, you did? Uh, okay. No, Great. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I didn't know. I did, um, I did sports bet, if you know who, who they are. I, I didn't realize. <laughs> um, I didn't realize Sorry. that gambling was. Oh, totally, part of TBA. Totally yeah, it's gambling's totally legal down. Sports betting is completely legal in Australia. I didn't know. Yeah, know that. yeah, it is. That's normal for us. It is not here. It is only legal in 
certain states and yeah, certain states, very limited. Okay. And so Are there any other questions? They called me up and said, hey, we're doing a campaign called Foolproof. And basically it's like if you if you if you if you if you are nutty enough to look at this particular topic, then you're nutty enough, then you're then you definitely can get our app, right? And I, I fly down there. It's, it was like really short notice. They said, Hey, can you be on? We'll send tickets. Come come to Melbourne. It's like, okay. Came down in the winter, it was cold, ugh, breezy, and um Sorry. <laughs> I, I was there for like two days or three days. No, I was there for an entire week. But I would I had to stay in my hotel for a couple of days just in case of reshoots and we didn't have to do them. So I just drank and ate and watched TV. So the um so the commercial was uh you can watch it if you want. I, I'll send it to you if you if you want. It's it's uh, I've got I've got a um yeah, I'll I'll shoot I'll shoot it to you after I'm done. So wait, an Australian mainstream organization hired a lunatic flat earther to do a commercial. Really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, billboards, buses, the whole nine yards. I mean, it was I, I would know. Um, I, swear, I, I, don't know. I was on TV. People didn't even know. People from Australia were contacting me. He was like, Why is Mark Sargent on Australian television? I'm going, uh, so so here's the deal. You're here's, an advocate for gambling. Great. <laughs> yeah, here's, here's where it gets weird. Where it gets weird is I was looking at the call sheet. You know, if you know anything about you know the, the call sheet, who's yeah, on see. there? And I was the only one listed without an agent. And I was like, wait a minute, what's going on exactly? And I go, I go, you know, like you got um, they were like they had some American beauty queens that were walking by. And uh, and I go, how'd you get <clears throat> Miss South Carolina? It's like, no, mate. You know, she's Australian. It's like, what? I go, they're all Australian. They go, yeah, all these are Australian actors, all of them. And I go, except me. And they go, yeah. And I go, why am I here? You could have faked, faked a flat earther, done in two seconds. You faked like three or four different Americans. Why didn't you fake me? Why'd you pay to, to have me come down? <laughs> and um, why not? I mean, seriously, it makes sense. Production standpoint, you didn't need me. Yeah. And they uh, said, well, one of the producers wanted you down here. Turns out there was people in sports bet that were flat earthers. And oh, that's thought, funny as. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they didn't want to be named. I still don't remember their names. And, and they, they came over really quiet about it. It's like, yeah. I go, are you the reason I'm here? I go, yeah. yeah sh shake hands. And, and then they went off and did their thing. And we shot the commercial and, and I left. Um, it so was I, flat earthers. They're just, they're just afraid to come out. They're 90% of the flat earthers that are out there um won't won't come out because they're they're scared i have talked to so many people i have family members that won't come out um uh the celebrities won't come out mostly because of what happened to the celebrities that did come out like Kyrie irving basketball player he came out was just crucified uh, shaquille o'neal he lasted 10 days um freddie flintoff cricket guy out of uk he got oh. Just black. Oh, I know who that is. Yes, uh, yeah, I yeah. Him from front, front page headlines. I mean, you know, you'll you do it, you're going to get in trouble. I mean, I have talked to celebrities that have said, "Yeah, I'm just no. speaking to you. I'm not a flat earth. I haven't I haven't said anything yet, whether I I believe it or not. I feel like there are arguments very much for it, and there are arguments very much against it. And me just interviewing you was like I'm interviewing a man who hurts children or something it was oh, like hell. you're gonna go down that road the reason uh, by the way the documentary like, uh, behind... my reputation will be ruined for talking to you and i'm like well, i no, am no, no. a it won't, it won't free be speech absolutist it won't be so ruined. There are bigger groups than you that have caught caught more backlash cbs for example big american network yes well i saw that i swear i saw you that's how i need to email you i'm like i saw you on cbs well, yeah. Well, I was on CBS and, and some other things, but we did a CBS piece down in Los Angeles uh, and it went up conference. on YouTube and it was tracking. It was the number one video on YouTube for a while on on uh, on the Flatter section. And then all of a sudden it was gone. And the reason was is because they caught backlash from the, the viewers. The viewers were like, how, why, how dare you? How dare you run a Flatter segment on this network? And they they the peer pressure peer pressure as you know cancel culture it's a real thing out there but this was pre oh, it is pre cancel culture yeah um but um, yeah yeah it, um, anyway, celebrities there's all sorts of celebrities the people that will not come out that I mean I've I've had uh, subject matter experts military guys that have said yeah I, I just can't take the risk I mean hell I'll, I'll tell you how bad it was Alex Jones right 
you know, the American conspiracy guy, Alex Jones, uh, he, he contacted me almost immediately, his, his producers, and said, how long can we do a show about Flat Earth without actually, actually saying Flat Earth? Ah, yeah. <laughs> I said, maybe 10 minutes. They said, yeah, we can't take the chance. It took three years later, and then David Weiss got on the show only because Eddie Bravo, uh, a famous you know UFC fighter, judo guy, oh. uh, only because he was a big champion of Flat Earth. And uh, and he got he got David on the show. I was like, yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. really weird. I mean, hell. Um, You're as bad Australian as the murderer. Open, the Australian Open that just happened, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, who's the, if you follow tennis at all, uh, Novak Djokovic. Uh, okay. Yeah, he's one of ours. And, oh, there you go. Yeah, but, but he only released a uh, a, a standing image. And Bill him. Burr. The what? Bill Burr. No, uh, he's, he, he supports a lot you guys. Of... Well, at least he's as nice to you guys as I'm being, at least. Well, no, no. Bill, Bill Burr started out, you know, he's, he's a comedian. He pokes fun at people and he's more interest for a while. He's softened recently, but then again, he's kind of an alternative thinker, which I like. He's, he's yes. one of my top five comedians of all time. So I'm not yeah. going to say anything bad about Bill Burr. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So Australian Protectionist Party. If the earth is flat, how thick is it? And what's on the other side? Ding, ding, ding. Great question. Uh, <laughs> I, which I throw back at science. It's like, how thick is this damn thing anyway, right? Well, uh, the, we usually throw that back at science. It's like, um, how, how thick is the earth according to science? Science will say the earth is 4,000 miles down to the core, and whatever that is in kilometers. Yeah. And really, what's the deepest hole ever drilled? Is it 2,000? miles is it a thousand miles is it a hundred is it 10 deepest hole is 12 kilometers ever drilled and the russians and the germans tried for years to get past it and they finally gave up so we don't know how deep it is i mean it, for me it's got to be at least 12 kilometers deep obviously but uh it, it, could it be 50 kilometers i don't know i because science when the, the bigger question is why does science showing this cross section of earth you know, if they have no idea what's inside it, no one ever questions like, why is there this perfect band of red and orange and yellow and white? Why are those perfectly 1000 miles thick? It's like, is that really how it is? Small print and science will say, yeah, we have no idea what's down there. It's like, well, then why do you say, you know, what's down there? Well, it's because we're science. Science will never put a big question mark in the middle of anything in a science book. They will always say, this is what it is. It used to be, this is what our best guess is. They don't say guess anymore. This no, they don't. Is. It's like great, fantastic. My understanding of science, and uh, this is how I understand it, and I could be wrong, and you can correct me, and a person who knows, who has a degree in science, can correct me. Yeah. Science today is coming up with with a theory, a math theory, having it corroborated, and then everyone agreeing, and that it, and it's right. Okay, but to me, science is supposed to be finite, absolute. So to me, you cannot change one plus one is two. It just is. So I don't know what my question is, but uh, there's a circle earth, yeah. but then there's a flat earth. Right. One of those has to be finite. And yeah. the circle earth theory covers seasons, covers uh, um, these particular sums. Hang on. It covers... Uh, H equals R minus R cos right. bracket S. So You're it's lose high the audience, by the way, if you keep giving up math. Well, I, I, I don't even understand what I'm saying, <laughs> but it's like H equals height, R equals radius of the earth, and S equals the arc length. All of these things, I, I assume, are finite. So, like, how can how can they how can your theory work if the other theory has all the algorithms already attached to it? And everything already works with it seasonally, sun, moon. It, it works because they shoehorned it in. First, don't forget that we've only been doing this six years. Uh, uh. And they've been, they took centuries to try to make it work. And they were wrong about everything, every step of the freaking way. To where now they're just making up stuff in the universe to try to fit their theories. Look up something called dark matter. Dark matter is an I'm familiar with it. The what? I'm familiar with dark matter. Oh, yeah, because yeah, dark matter. It's an absolute theory, theory uh, that sure. supposedly fills in the gaps of 95% of the universe. 
And so the this reason is, why they have to, yep, uh, look, it's the Flat Earth app. It's a beautiful app. It's, it's the Flat Earth app, but I just want people to see where the sun is, where the moon is. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's in real It's in real time. It'll show you where the sun is and the moon is and why, you know, where the shadow is and where. Yeah. It doesn't show exact gradients of, of exactly how bright the sun is in certain places, but, but it's accurate. But is um, it? A, yeah, that's my point, though. Like, you guys, how, how do you, how, you said that with the globe theory, they've shoehorned it in. Yeah. But what's to say that that argument can't be reversed and that you guys have shoehorned your finite algorithms into the flat earth theory? You're, and you're right. The question is, is that how are we doing so well when the globe has been established for how are we even staying in the fight? Meaning, if flat earth is so ridiculous, then why are we just, just batted off to the side immediately? Meaning, I'll use the boxer reference. And that is, we are going into a boxing ring with this huge gorilla, right? And we should be pummeled in the first round. The problem is, is the longer we stay in that fight, the worse it looks for the, the big guy on the other side. Because they're always like, why haven't you knocked out these guys yet? Why are they still, st why are they still standing, right? Why, you know, again, what you just said, things can be flipped, which is like their math. Absolutely. Or, it's they're, they're, religion. Like I get into, I get into arguments with Catholics all the time when I say that there's no point to a pontiff. And then they're like, and then they have their own biblical, their own Bible theory saying, no, you can't say that this about my Pope and you can't say that Catholicism isn't Catholic. Yes, I can. The Bible says so. But you're, do you know what I mean? It's like, it's yeah, the same yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah. I mean, uh, by the way, the, the question on the bottom of the screen, uh, let me do this real quick. Oh, yes, answer, answer. So um, he's right. saying, where I am, the sun looks, looks larger, larger at rise and set. Rise and set. No, it's not refraction. It's atmospheric lensing. That's a real thing. We didn't invent that. Any meteorological, meteorologist will tell you this, which is, again, because you are looking through, uh, kind of like looking through a glass of water. You can you can do this with water. It's actually very interesting. You put a, a glass of water on the edge of a table and put a flashlight behind it and move the flashlight backwards, you know, behind behind the glass. You can make that flashlight set. It's like, how is it set? It's a perfectly flat tabletop. Well, because the 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 medium that is the water is bending it. No different than what we were talking about with the sun going off in the distance. Meaning you are looking through a thin version of water. Me that's why they call it atmospheric lensing. It will magnify, no different than a, any sort of lens, magnify so the tops and the bottoms will get chopped. Because if you take a magnifying glass, I think I have one right here. Take a magnifying glass and you zoom it in on certain things, you'll chop off the top and the bottom because, well, because you're zooming in on the center. And that's what happens with just about any object, which is why, yeah, you can find some footage of boats where it looks like the, the bottom and the top or the bottom's getting you know chopped off because of the horizon, but it's not. Uh, in fact, the, the, the again, the brilliance of the design of this place, give credit to God here, is that it's constantly changing. So you can't totally get a bead on it. The atmosphere, as you know, weather conditions change not just daily, but hourly, depending on where you are. And yeah. that screws up so many observations, which is why you have to lose, use time lapse in some cases. We've done time lapses across huge lakes in America and that or infrared. Infrared doesn't lie. But time lapse, it's wonderful because the if there is any sort of mirage or illusion, you can see it, and those prove our point. Um, I would like to mention that one of the videos that I was watching um, in my in my rabbit hole of this of this topic was uh, a guy who uh, I forget the channel, but anyway, he was um, looking at declassified documents from the USSR. Sure. And and. Um, uh, and NASA, and he was reading them from 1958. Okay. And in 1958, they were still operating. They were operating on the theory that the Earth was still flat. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, NASA it, was as not, well. It's not even 1958. It's it's earlier. Not, when you're it earlier was aircraft. and later. Yeah, yeah, aircraft testing. When um, it's one of the qualifications, that is, when you're doing ballistic testing with certain things, 
you assume, and the verbiage, I, hopefully I don't butcher this, you assume a flat and stationary earth. It's just like this one or two yes, lines. Yes, that's what they say. It's a flat and stationary earth. That's exactly yeah. what they, if they use the geocentric model as opposed to the heliocentric model. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, every, look, the military guys, the subject matter list that I pasted into chat there, that's no joke. And it's a, it's a, it's, um, it's a playlist yeah. on the channel called Flatter Testimony Shows by Subject Matter Experts. Every military guy I've talked to, has said yeah. that when you're firing anything, that it's still, but yeah, when you're firing anything long distance, you are not taking into account the curvature of the earth or the spin of the earth into any firing solution. Doesn't matter if it's a missile, if it's a cannon, if it's a tank, if it's a torpedo, none of them take into account the uh, the curvature of the earth. And yet, every once in a while, the news will drag out some sniper that says, Oh, yeah, I shot almost a mile and I had to take a take account the curvature of the earth. It's like, No, you didn't. I shoot. Right, there's two things on a scope windage and elevation. There's only two things. There's no five. Show me the curvature calculator on a, on a scope, on a rifle, on anything. It doesn't exist. But yet, every once in a while, the news will bring this out. It's like, okay, I've talked to guys that fire 30, 50 times farther than this guy. And when you fire that long, in fact, I have a, one of my favorite uh, guys is um, a tank guy out of um, United States Army. And he goes, do you know how hard it would be to, to do anything in military battles if we had to do it, take into account the curvature and the spin of the earth? It, we, we never get anything done. I mean, it would be because at that point you'd have to not up until now. It's like, OK, how far away it is? What's the elevation? Maybe windage if you're lucky. Right. But if you're taking into account the spin of the earth or the, um, the curvature, you'd have to be like, OK, where exactly am I on the map? Because remember, if it spins at a, if your basketball is spinning a thousand miles an hour at the center, it's spinning at zero miles an hour on the top and the bottom. It means in, anywhere in between, it's like 500 miles an hour, 700 miles an hour. All these things would supposedly affect it. One more thing out of it, since we're on this. If the earth is spinning a thousand miles an hour, then why is all the water completely uniform? Meaning, Water is extreme. Doesn't gravity hold it in and make it still appear flat? Isn't that the yeah, answer to the question yes, you just asked? Can only do so much. Meaning, if you're at a merry-go-round, you're on a merry-go-round, right? If you're on the edge, you're holding on for dear life. If you're in the center, not much is going on. You're just spinning around in a circle, but you're not feeling any gravity, you know, any gravitational force. Yes, I'm going to say gravitational force. So why doesn't the water look if you're in a, your car and you're calling a cup of coffee, you try to make a hard left turn. If that lid is in that cup of coffee, what happens? That coffee's going somewhere. Right. So why isn't there this huge bulge of water around the equator, kind of like the rings of Saturn, only with water? Why isn't there a huge bulge of water around the equator? It's like, well, because uh, gravity, it's like gravity wouldn't keep it completely uniform. I mean, you're saying that what there there should be bald spots on the top and the bottom of that damn thing. It should be a whole bunch of water in the middle. And again, we get away with it because people just you know, we we're just happy to be out of school when we're younger. <laughs> and when we get out, it's like yeah, we we bet we don't know much about anything, including virology and finances. I just um, find it unusual as someone who doesn't believe organizations that are larger than myself i yeah. do find it unusual that these these papers from russia ussr um and america from the ninth from, by the time they had already that by the time they had already said that they'd been to the moon by that yeah. time and after up until yeah. 1970 they were still operating on the theory that the earth was flat in their secret documentation that is odd yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And so, what does that how, like? What does that lead to? And um, uh, yeah. So again, I, I feel like I'm a centrist on this topic, but I don't know science. I'm very much an illiterate. So people watching this will say, "How dare she? She didn't push back enough. She's so easily led." No, no, um, no, no. I feel no, like I'm being Look. as kind as I can be without believing everything you're saying, but still definitely taking on. As much of it as I, as I I think I can. I hear you, and believe me, look, I wasn't. I hated science. Well, I shouldn't say I hated science. Well, I just I'm I, not a sciencey person. I'm history, politics, English, Spanish. Like these are my things that I'm good at. Mo most of the people that I've talked to in our community had to relearn science because of all the things we we had to brush up on things that we were told because we forgot everything when we left school. And so, uh, look, I, I know more little scientific factoids now than I ever did in university just because it's like, okay, what are they saying? In fact, 
don't forget that everyone that is in our community starts out trying to disprove it. Everybody hates it. And nobody gets into it like oh, that. Right? I don't care to disprove it. I just care to, to mention the things that don't make sense to me. And then that's, that's pretty but much a lot of A lot of people, though, when they get into it, they're like, yeah, Flat Earth, David Weiss, first one to tell you, it's like, oh, yeah, I hated it. He goes, he goes I would block people from my channel. They would even bring it up. Oh. And but when you start getting into it, it's like, okay, I can shut this thing down in two seconds. And then they, and it takes, it's harder and harder. I worked on it for nine months, tried to, to shut it down for nine months. And then finally I gave up and made the videos and said, okay, help me out, internet. You're smarter as a group than you are individuals. Tell me where I screwed up. And I had all these people contact me. It's like, you're not, you're not nuts. Here's why. And they would give me ideas that I had never even, even thought of. I didn't think of long distance photography. I didn't think of vacuum versus gravity. Um, what do we got here? Uh, oh, th th this is just compliments to me. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, but um, there are other questions here. Hang on. Um, if the sun is moving overhead, should it appear larger overhead? Mm, no. No, 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 no. No, the sun is fairly uniform because it's uh, it's three thousand. If it's three thousand, given to take miles wide or so, three thousand miles away and fifty miles high, the problem is again the atmosphere because the atmosphere is so inconsistent. It's always going to look bigger. It's kind of like phenomena. I still don't know why scientists haven't haven't mentioned this. It's why the moon is always bigger on the horizon. You know, when the moon's coming up, it's like, oh my god, it's a huge moon. But then it gets smaller as it gets higher in the sky. It's because you're losing the atmospheric lensing. I do not know why scientists still throw that out there. It's like, well, we don't know why. It's like, yes, you do. You don't you know, know why. They, they st we're still operating that we came from apes. Yeah, what's what's that line from the comedian uh, I love so much? It's like, okay, if we came from monkeys, why are there still monkeys? You know? It, yeah, yeah, I've heard right, that. Like, and and atheists it, get really it, mad. And then they say, oh, it's because it's, it's a relative of the ape. It's not the ape. How is that so hard for you to understand? Yeah. And the, again, yeah. you, you know the argument was like, okay, the missing link is where exactly? Come on, don't, yeah, don't it's get me started. Thing. It's, it's the, the, the carbon, da carbon dating system. Oh, by the way. It's that, inaccurate. The, I already know this, yeah. The carbon dating system is absolute crap, which uh -huh. is why, by the way, why I bring yes, I up that, that fish. Because the, it's like because they don't want they you do can't not observe want. what you didn't see. You didn't see the fish to know yeah. that you came from a fish. Yeah, the the fish is there, but you say that fish died off, you know, hundred million years ago. And oh, sorry, you're talking about that fish. I was talking well, about that fish. Else. Well, but yes, the the fish argument as well. It's like sorry. yeah, we, we evolved from all these things, but all these things are still here. There should be missing links in all sorts of different places, but they're not. I mean, yeah, there's some weird animals around, but. Mm. We, we no 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 carbon dis dating system by the way that's the other thing really fast which is why the reason why you wouldn't want this to get out without you can be able to control it is religion oh happy dog sorry the, uh, he had he had he ate rat poison two days ago oh my oh, gosh that's not good. and now he's doing okay oh my gosh the the religious houses of this world would go against science and and immediately say okay so you were wrong about the whole globe thing what? What? <laughs> Sorry, let me get him out. He just pushed in. Come on, get out. Come on. It's still going. I want to learn. Get out. Get we out. Can, we, can, we can wrap this up in a little bit. I don't want to. Oh, I out. know, but uh, I've been going for two and a half hours. I, gotta, I, gotta I know, I know. Okay, we will, we will, we will. It's okay. Okay, keep going. So, keep so, going. Um, the, the major religious houses of the world would say, okay, so you were wrong about this whole globe thing. What else are you wrong about? Let's revisit mm -hmm. the Big Bang Theory, evolution, carbon dating, dark matter. They, they'd never stop. Science would be in real trouble for a long time. And so they, what was this thing? Why is the shadows of the moon on Earth during an eclipse smaller than the diameter of the moon? Yeah, absolutely right. Well, that's, that's the great question. Why is it we... Because for us, it isn't smaller because we say the moon is about 50 miles wide. So uh, it's actually the perfect size for us. It only doesn't work for science because science is a 2,000 mile wide moon. It doesn't exist. It's not that. Um, the Earth is flat. How can somebody sail around the world? Ah, great question. <laughs> Ready? Here we go. So if I take my finger and I move it around this, I do a big circle, and I come back to my same starting point, technically, I circumnavigated the, the, um, the, the world, right? Does that make the world a globe? Nope. <laughs> if you circumnavigate your dinner plate with your finger, does that mean your dinner plate is a globe? No. 
Just because you came back to the same point, technically a, a needle on a record player comes back basically to the same point. Record flat. Why don't you guys, why don't, why don't whoever is your richest person yeah. that, that wants to help prove the theory right, why don't you guys get two ships? So here's Australia, right here where my I know, hand I know is. the argument. Yeah. Yeah, and then then someone goes that way, someone goes that way, and see what 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 the length is compared to the the flat Earth model, and, and then that way you'd be able to prove it. I mean, I know you think you might be stopped by the military or that they might shoot you, but um, why doesn't someone just do that and prove it? Because the Antarctic Treaty was expanded. No, I'm so, not telling you to go to Antarctica. I'm telling you someone to travel all the way around and, and, and do the measurements. So you don't know my argument. You don't know my, my, my right. experiment. No, no, no. I know this argument too. Okay. <laughs> the problem with if you're going to use aircraft alone, ships is... No, well. ships, not uh, aircraft. How are you going to get... You're going to have to go around continents if you're, if you're using ships. I mean, it's 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 tough to it's tough to gauge. Remember, there's no odometer with ships when it, when it comes to how far you've traveled. You you can only go off the GPS system, which is part of we'll use a matrix reference here. It's part of the system. Remember, the oh. GPS is going to tell you not only where you are but what it wants to tell you. And the GPS system is American military, so it's not gonna it's not gonna help you. What it's about not, what about a drone? Fly the drone over the Arctic, the Antarctic wall to drones. see what's on the other side. 16 drones were forbidden in Antarctica. Funny enough. Weird that they would add that in there. They said oh. it was for environmental reasons, but... Doesn't matter. They would anyway. How They won't know who it belongs to. I mean, oh, I don't think they would. I like your style. Yeah, rebel. <laughs> Do it anyway. Well, I bet you don't even wear a mask. I don't. Good for you. Did you not know that? Yeah. No, I don't do that. I wouldn't. I mean, I've heard horrible things about Australia, but mm -hmm. uh, that's my state too, Melbourne, the city of Melbourne, Victoria. That's where that eight-month lockdown happened. I wasn't there. I was here in this house when that was happening. But yeah, it's pretty shitty. Absolutely ridiculous. I, in fact, here, let me let me sum that up really quick for you. I, I, I do okay. have to go soon. I know you got to go to sleep, people. <laughs> I've been sucking anyone, your time out. Anyone that gives me crap. using you. What? I'm just using you because because it's you're my current. You're my current rabbit hole. Uh, I've done I've done worse. Um, oh. the, I, the time zone things just like oh god, uh, what time do I have to get up? I once yeah, had uh, Russell Thank Brand. You. His show called me up and they said, "Can you get a Russell Brand?" Yeah, yeah. Can you do a, a show at, at you know he does a noon a lunchtime show? It's like that's three a.m. my time, and it's like yeah, can you do it? It's like uh, fine, I'll do it. Um. And they didn't tell him. It was kind of a fun interview to do. Uh, crap. What was I just talking about? Um, oh, hang on. Let me think. Um, uh, Russell Brand, you went on his show. No, uh, no, no. Before Russell Brand, it was... Oh, oh, okay. The virus. Virus. Okay. So real oh. quick. People say... I know. I'm getting a little sleepy. So people I say... I know. I'll let you go. I'm so sorry. <laughs> They say, you know, you're, you're not taking it seriously. I go, you want me to take the virus seriously? Fine. Answer, because I will boil things down to usually a sentence or two or a paragraph. But this one's a simple sentence. It's like, okay, you want me to take it seriously? Here it is. You can throw this back at anybody. Forget about all the long-winded things about virology and, and incubation periods and all this other crap. Tell me why smoking was banned on airplanes. Okay. The reason is, is because, well, secondhand smoke kills people. Nothing stops smoke. Even our lungs can't stop smoke. So if you're a smoker and you have a spouse and you breathe on them long enough, they're going to get cancer. Everybody knows this, right? Okay. So they eventually said, yeah, we can't have smoking on airplanes ever again because the filters don't do crap. The filters cannot stop smoke. Every pilot has told me the same thing, which is um, uh, the filters are basically just furnace filters. If you make coffee in the back of the plane, the pilot will smell it in less than 90 seconds. That's how fast air circulates through the cabin. Okay. It's, less, it's, 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 it's an incubator. I have done business travel for a number of years. Every business traveler knows this. It's like if you get on a business plane and two or three guys are sick, you know full well. It's like, oh, crap. Whatever they have, hopefully I've had it already. All right? Okay. Okay. So if smoking is banned on airplanes and smoke particles are 50 to 80 times larger than an airborne virus particle, why are the planes still flying? Why didn't the planes ever shut down? 
Why are the airports still open? The planes never stopped flying here. Oh, yeah, borders closed. I mean, you couldn't, you know, do international travel in some cases, but that was a country issue. Domestically, you could fly anywhere you want. I flew last year. Not very many places because we there were very few places we could do without masks, but I flew places. No one ever asked me a single thing. Well, how, how is that even possible? People forget how serious a, a real contagion is. Boy, I mentioned the Steven Soderbergh movie, Contagion. You want to know what it really looks like? Contagion. It's like nobody goes anywhere. Everything is locked down. The airports are closed. The grocery stores are closed. Nobody, people literally hide behind their doors. Nobody goes outside. There's no masks. Nobody, you see any masks in that movie? No, you saw full containment suits. The masks did nothing. The masks. Oh, never... I know. I already know that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, so, so it's like, no, nobody can, nobody can get, forgive me any, it's like, you can't make me, you want to, you want to make me take it seriously. Find me a group of younger people that just dropped like a sack of freaking dirt. Find me, find me. It never, ever happened. Find me, find me a healthy person. You know, that's, it's the shock and awe that gets people fear. It's like, find me a, a, like a, one of your friends, like 35 year old guy jogging. Right. And, and then all of a sudden, two weeks later, gone. Right? And just like, wow, I looked at, he looked so great. Like it's, it's totally a surprise to me. Find me a group of volleyball players that were playing on the beach together. And then three of them are gone now. It's never, ever happened. I, the whole year I knew one person, one person. He was my uncle. He was almost 90. He was a recovering stroke victim. He got pneumonia, then was admitted to the hospital. And while there's like, oh yeah, by the way, you have COVID. And then he died. And, and what do you think they put him as? It's like, did he die of the pneumonia? Did he die of the stroke? Did he die of being 90? Nope. He nope, died of C-19. It was ridiculous. And, and, and no, and so I don't, it, it's not, that's not supposed to be a sympathy thing. It's like, look, that was an entire. No, but with this was, topic, you and I do agree. Yeah, I mean, I've done with C19 at least. As I ask my callers all the time, I go, "Tell me about somebody, anyone." And oh, nobody. Now, the agenda behind this is sinister and it's brilliant. It has worked. It has worked flawlessly. And uh, some countries better than better than others, but oh. Yeah, this actually, my interview next week is with a doctor that works for the World Health Organization. Ooh, that'll be fun. Yeah, I did it yesterday because she couldn't do it next wednesday so that only the chat will be live um this is the last question from an audience member sorry to ask again i want to see you destroy destroy them is all have you debated jf or ndg tyson publicly um vox day destroyed jf a couple of years ago i don't know who jf is but i'm assuming neil degrasse tyson is yeah, neil degrasse is. Who's jf jf i don't know somebody type that in um Neil deGrasse Tyson doesn't do debates. First off, he only does of stage performances. Not. Of course, I, that is his talent. Look, you you go with what you're good with, and uh, he is very good on stage. He's got a wonderful stage performance. Um, he's he's very. I call him. He's a cross between Bill Cosby and Sinbad. But he knows the Earth is flat at some level because he said it. So he must uh, be in on the secret. He, I don't think he, he he objectively knows because remember he, he's, say that. he's better. It, it's like does Neil deGrasse Tyson know? You know, was he briefed on the topic? Probably not because you want him acting naturally. You don't want him acting squirrely uh, about this. Um, but he doesn't do debates ever, uh, just because that's just not his thing. And he's he Can said I not even shy about. It. He goes, I don't do debates. He debates nothing about anybody. He just goes on stage. I call him the the science. I really I don't feel smart enough to do a debate on any particular topic. I always am the moderator, but I would never do a debate. Oh, yeah. you. I think you're more of a moderator. Who's JF, though? He just wrote here. Joe JF. Gary Eppi. I don't know. They still haven't They still haven't cl cl clarified who JF is. I'm sorry. I thought they would have by now. Um, I did want to say that I find it interesting that the, is it the UN that has a flat earth map? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I I could. That's say interesting, that. right? That the yeah, UN, UN has a UN flag. flag. You could type in UN flag, and it uses the exact map that we use. The only exception is they don't. He's a French Canadian. Oh, oh, wait. I know. Wait, JF. Is, I was thinking I Jordan. I was thinking Jordan Peterson, but that's not. That would not be in it. <laughs> um, he's a. I don't know who it is. I don't, I don't know who he is. Sorry. Um, yeah, is. And if I don't know who he is, well, not much I can do. 
Um, the UN flag, the only difference is instead of Antarctica around the edge, right, there is wreaths, these giant spiky Greco-Roman wreaths around the outside, which I think is interesting. And I mentioned that in the clues, which is the UN flag is, you know, they're, they're calling it out. Why, why wouldn't they? In fact, people say, well, that's the only way you could just depict the world. It's like, no, there isn't. There's all sorts of different uh, projections you could use. Using the, the AE map as the, as the UN flag doesn't make any damn sense. Because also, why would you leave out an entire continent? Antarctica literally is not represented in, in the UN flag. Why would you do that? And, and part of that is because, well, nobody owns Antarctica. It's no man's land. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, they're just, they're just another yeah. great show. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I yeah. hope that I, I was respectful. You asked, you asked wonderful questions. Thank you. And I'm, I'm glad you... Uh, uh, is there any way I could get an... Um, where, just send me a link of where I can find this later. Oh, of course. Yes, yeah. please share it, please. Um, I, that would be lovely. Share it. Once my community guideline thing is gone, I will. Well, I'll share it with other people anyway. But well, uh, put it, put it, put it on the flat Earth app. <laughs> I will. You know what? I will send. I will send it to David Weiss, and and he'll put it up. Oh, okay, cool. That'd be nice. Um, I think what David Weiss is doing is really interesting. If anyone thinks they can debate David Weiss, he will give you $36,000 in Bitcoin if you can debunk him. So everyone try. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Oh, have you already talked to him? No, I've never spoken to him. I just know about... The only reason I know about him is because another flat earther friend of mine said that. He said there's this guy named David Weiss and he's trying to, yeah. he's trying to find someone who can beat him on the arguments and if you do he'll give you bitcoin and it's worth thirty six thousand dollars well actually i think it's worth fifty thousand now oh okay well there yeah. you go yeah but it doesn't really i mean yeah the the bitcoin thing is 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 a great little hook and uh it and is it, yeah it's it, clever it, it, but anyway it, i don't i don't know where i am on the topic yet but i, I, I with is, the science I, I can't i can't i can't operate it's just not there for me right. but with the papers in 1958 and in 1986, they were still operating on a flat earth theory. That is right. odd. That is odd. Let me give you my, my parting shot here, which is Go for ahead. you and anybody else. I was like, look, everything I've said just now, take it with a grain of salt. Do your uh, own research. I'm not, I'm not here to convince you. I'm not here to persuade you. I'm just here to put a couple ideas in your head. What I encourage everyone to do always is do your own research. Ask Stop questions. It. Figure it yeah. out for yourself, uh, because that way, you know, when you come to your conclusion, you came to it. You know, it, it didn't it didn't necessarily come from me. I'm just the one that brought up the topic. So, uh, again, the, the line that I love so much, which is, um, it, look, there, we all know there's conspiracies out there in just about everything sure. you can think of. Um, it's just willing what what you're willing to look at and what you're not. Uh, and I said it earlier. And then, look, trust everyone, but count your change. There you go. Okay. And everyone, remember the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. <laughs> there you go. All right. End broadcast.